Hello, dear viewers. Thank you for choosing Manhua Compilation Channel. Please leave your feedback after watching. Enjoy watching. Zhonghai City, Pinan Clinic. This is where our story begins. An enraged Han Shiwei, the head doctor of the clinic, was at a loss as to how Dr. Mai could suggest that the operation for which he was responsible should be performed by some ambulance driver. He believes that they cannot take risks because Ye Lao is a public hero. The council asked Mr. Han to calm down. The chairman of the clinic, Li Jiaquan, asked whether this driver, Yan Feng, was really able to identify a heart defect without the help of hardware diagnostics and wants to perform the operation not according to the generally accepted norm. Maya Qian, the surgeon responsible for the operation, confirmed that initially she did not believe him because he was just a driver, but after opening the chest, she became convinced that this was precisely why the operation was unsuccessful. A dispute arose between the chief physician and the chairman of the clinic. Han did not want to believe that Yan Feng was able to identify the disease just like that, because even the king of the monkeys could not do it, and was even more worried that the operation might fail, and then the reputation of the hospital would suffer. Li Jiaquan got angry and slammed his fist on the table. He believed that it was enough to discuss this, because if the operation was successful, then the reputation would grow, and the guy was able to identify the disease with just one glance. He didn't want to hear anything else, no matter how it was. The ambulance driver was their last hope. Ye Lao couldn't die in their arms. The reputation was already not very good, because they could not even cope with simple operations. It was decided to bring him. By coincidence, this was impossible. Li Jiaquan fired him himself not suspecting that it was him. Three days ago, he was caught spying on how a female doctor was washing, and he was fired. Jaquan was outraged by his action. How could this happen? He went too far with the punishment because everyone is not a saint. Mai was sent to find this driver and bring him back. Now everything was at stake, Ye Lao must live. In exchange for this, he promised her to allocate funds for research. Since the operation was interrupted, Ye Lao will last about five hours. There are already five hours left. We need to hurry up. There was a basketball match going on. Yan Feng was on the team at the tournament, player number. There were 12 seconds left in the match. Yan was tearing everyone apart on the field. One managed for three. From the stands, the players were told what to do so that the seventh would not take the ball and go further to the net. There is less and less time left. The enemy built a wall of players. Yan was angry but determined to win. In the last seconds, he gains momentum and, like a bull, runs with the ball towards the opponent. He breaks into the front. At breakneck speed, not noticing anyone or anything, he rushes like lightning. He is very close, although he seemed so far away. Nobody believed it, but he takes off straight to the hoop with the ball. Two seconds left. Everyone freezes in anticipation of whether it will be a goal or whether he will miss. This is a sensation. He hits the hoop, tired, angry, hanging on the hoop into which he threw the winning ball. The whistle blows. The match is over. The Greens won with a score of 143. Everyone is delighted with issue 7. It's cool. The stadium is screaming his name. All the girls are crazy about him. He shows his fans that he loves them. The fans ask him to come closer. The stadium is full of emotions. He is heading towards them. Suddenly, someone called out behind him. It was the gorgeous Mai Kyu Yan. She finally found him. All the players held their breath as she walked past. The newly confident guy, the winner, hesitated and began to make excuses to her that he didn't see her naked on purpose. It was an accident. But that's not what she came to him for. The players of the red team were angry after the game because Li Mao has a new foreign player and perhaps he will have to give the winning place. But they certainly didn't want that. They began to think over a plan to get rid of him. After all, for every tough legionnaire, you can find a person who will break his legs. Then you need to have a rematch and get everything back and, of course, the money. And this doll can also be taken away. On the way to the car, the surgeon explained why she was looking for him. Yan became enraged and started hitting her car. So, how can I get him out of the clinic as quickly as possible, please? And if I screw up with the operation, run to him. He didn't understand why he had to cover their asses. Mai began to persuade him because Ye Lao was on the verge of life and death. 
and only he could save him. For such a favor, he can ask them for anything. What can the clinic offer him? Money and a position. And why does he need them if he helped win one match and received several thousand? Mai didn't understand what he wanted. Did he really want something from her personally? Yan smiled slyly and winked at her with a grin. He pressed him to himself. His torso was naked. If she pays, then he will think. His gaze fell on her chest. When he saw this, the surgeon became embarrassed and angry. Quickly turning her back to him, she began to scream so that he wouldn't even think about it. Yan laughed. He didn't mean anything like that. She herself thought about dirty things. What can you find in girls' heads? His condition was to live for six months in a building next to a pharmaceutical factory, that's all. Mai's apartment was in that building. She had no choice, she agreed, because only he can save Ye Lao. They went to the clinic. The situation near the intensive care unit was tense. Ye Lao had a couple of hours left, but Mai and Yan were not there yet. They did not know what to do next and whether they would arrive at all. In the operating room, Ye Lao was connected to a heart-lung machine and under anesthesia. Mei and Yan walked along the corridor. Already ready and dressed for the operation, she told along the way what the situation with the patient was. The chest was opened. The condition worsened sharply, so they had to immediately apply a suture, after which the heartbeat improved, and thus they gained time. Because he was in critical condition, they will have to sweat. Having stood at the operating table, they saw that the heart failure was severe. Multiple organ failure, heart rate 35, all indicators did not correspond to surgical ones. Yan told the head nurse to administer IV cardinal needle, 2 mg. As soon as the pulse stabilizes, you need to start opening the chest. The nurse was indignant as 2 mg because 1 mg is already the limit, but no one listened to her. With every second, the pulse became higher and more stable. Yan told the surgeon to cut the chest along the previous suture. Mei didn't understand. After opening it a second time, the situation would repeat itself again, since the heart problem was not solved. But her partner will take care of heart problems himself. Her task is to do what he said. The tension grew. Everyone was worried and wanted a good ending. She agreed to obey and asked for help in removing the fastenings. One by one, the fastenings were removed. Various number 22 blades and rectangular stackers were used during the operation. Heparin 3 major caligui, a tape was pushed into the central vein to block the carotid artery. It worked. Now they can open their chests. Well done, everyone. They did everything in 10 minutes. Unexpectedly for everyone, the pulse began to drop. 30, 26. The heart stopped. Everyone was in shock. The nurse suggested using a defibrillator. Yan said to continue with the heart-strengthening injection, give an intracardiac injection, 2 mg, diluted 10 times with sterile saline. But there was still no reaction. Since the responsibility for the operation was on Yan, he told him what to do, although it was a very strange order, to give a 3 mg injection to the right ventricle again. The nurse was very doubtful whether it was worth doing this, because it was not according to the protocol. Having made this injection, a miracle happened and my heart began to beat. The whole team couldn't believe their eyes. The heart rate was 40, quite stable, impressive. But don't get too excited just yet. The lung tumor needs to be removed, but this is not difficult for our surgeon. And Yan Fei must deal with his heart. They decided to operate at the same time. Something went wrong. The heart stopped beating again. He decided to continue the operation. He needed to take a photo and cut out the heart. Dr. Mai frantically shouted his name. She was scared. His decision cannot be changed. The operation continues. The blood was black and smelled bad. This poison must have been introduced by the enemy during the war, and now it has become jelly-like and attached to the inner wall. It is believed that the heart has been corroded, and this is the cause of heart disease. Mai was surprised how Yan knew all such nuances. Nurse Lin was supposed to hold the blood vessel while Yan prepared the cleaning solution, but she was very afraid. This toxin is not something that can be washed off with a regular cleaning solution. He needed to use something special. I decided to add a drop of my blood. I gave the mixed solution to Dean. He should use it to cleanse the inner wall of the heart. The washed toxins should be collected so that they can be taken. Trouble is about to begin. Yan needs to prepare for it. Having washed everything, the heartbeat did not recover. 
three minutes had already passed. Mai is also not doing well. The activity of her lungs has stopped. The tissue has started to bleed. The blood vessel has become very hard. The pupils began to show absent-mindedness. Jan said to leave everything like that. He'll come over now. He walked up to the operating table and began to massage the heart with his fingers. Everyone moved away from the table and did not understand what was happening. They just watched what was happening. Jan continued to massage with increasing speed. His fingers moved faster and faster and his heart slowly began to beat. Heartbeat returned. 50. It was amazing. No one understood what he did. This was recorded in medical history as the butterfly dance resonance. Everything is fine, so everyone got up and continued the operation. Suddenly, the eldest granddaughter of Ye Lao, a Shanghai policeman, jumped into the office of the head doctor of the clinic. Her complaint was how they could allow the ambulance driver to operate on her grandfather. He began to make excuses to her. He wanted to stop it, but the dean wanted him to have an operation. The head doctor did not understand how this happened. He tried to resist him, but he still insisted that Yang Feng perform the operation. He couldn't understand what kind of relationship there was between them, but he knew for sure that Ye Lao could have lived for another five hours. The policewoman wanted to see Dean Li and Yang Feng, who agreed to take her to the operating room. Han Shiwei was glad, and like a cunning jackal, he waited for what would happen next. Yesu Han jumped into the operating room, threatening that if the driver touched her grandfather, she would kill him. The nurses tried to stop her, explaining that there was an emergency operation going on there, but she couldn't be stopped. She wanted to know who Yang Feng was. Yang Feng responded to her and turned around and threw a needle from a syringe at her head. She immediately lost consciousness. The guards took it as an attack on the police. Holding her in his arms, they threatened him that he would find out what consequences awaited him. The ambulance driver explained that he was saving Elder Ye, and she simply fainted. He'd rather go and finish what he started than be here discussing an attack on the police. Han Shiwei was sad that the plan failed and they walked out, leaving them to continue the operation. Dr. Mai noticed that Dr. Yang looked bad. The main part of the tumor was trimmed. Now she was working on the area of spread. They need to hurry up. The heart worked hard with the help of the doctor's hand. Yang held on with all his strength, butterfly resonance. The hand can no longer move. He didn't want to use it again. The operation continued further. Everything was going well. He could stop now. His heart was working anyway. Yan Feng heard a ringing in his ears. He was getting worse. The hand could no longer work. There was a veil in the eyes. Any minute, he would lose consciousness. The chief doctor stood at the door of the operating room. Inside, he wanted the operation to fail. The door opened. Dr. Yan was led out by the arms. He could barely walk with his feet. Han Shiwei rejoiced and began to laugh. The doctor fainted because he was ashamed to leave there. The nurse was in a hurry to upset him and said that the operation was successful and Dr. Yang was tired. Dr. Mai and the dean were stitching, and Assistant Han could not understand how this was possible, how such an operation could even end successfully. Anger filled him. It's impossible for this to happen. It's all not true. Women's room, May changing clothes after surgery. She was all about the resonance of the butterfly dance, just like in a martial arts novel she had never heard of it. The dean seems to definitely know something about this. Mai wanted and decided to ask Yan to teach her this butterfly renaissance. Although this guy usually annoyed her, saving a person's life is serious. Opening the door, she entered the room to find out how he was feeling, whether he was better. And there is a picture that I didn't expect to see at all. Yan is watching films for adults. The doctor began to joke that it was not what she thought, but just a computer virus. Feisty May was shocked. He sat in her favorite blanket in her office and made it so loud that her colleagues might now think something wrong about her. Yan insisted that it was indeed a virus and asked her to believe her. Beautiful. May grabbed him by the blanket and began to pull, giving him a couple of splashes. Pulling, he fell on top of her and the blanket covered them. No one stopped the broadcast, the video went on, Yan lay on Mai and proved to her that it was all a virus. He was looking at the biology website. Suddenly, this video just opened. It cannot be closed. You can check it by looking at the computer. Mai can't believe him. She's sure he lied to watch the dubious video. He needs to move. Get up quickly, because if someone comes in and sees that he is pressing her to the ground, 
they will think something wrong. May continued to mumble that scum like him are definitely looking at the biology website. She couldn't help wondering why he was in her favorite blanket. When Yan woke up in her office after the operation, he felt cold from the air conditioner. He could not find the remote control. Opening the closet, he saw a blanket and took it. Everything would be fine, but he used her personal item and also confused it with another office. Mai wanted to get the blanket back quickly, but Yan didn't want to give it away at all. Without it, he would catch a cold. Sticking his tongue out at her and mocking her, he began to tease her that she was stingy. Dr. Mai was very angry, and without hesitation, she rushed to take the blanket. Being careless, she tripped over his leg and began to fall. Fung extended his hand. He wanted to catch her so as not to let her fall, but he only managed to grab her by the hem of her shirt. Holding her by the shirt prevented her from falling and at the same time joked about her. Something didn't go according to plan. The shirt began to crack. Mai fell and Fen remained standing with the shirt in his hands. Mai was left in one bra, a very awkward situation. What did Dr. Yan do? He behaved like a brute if you look at it from the girl's side, although in fact it was an accident. This whole scene was interrupted by an unexpected knock on the door and the question, Dr. Yang, are you inside? Ye Lao's granddaughter heard about her grandfather's condition and came to apologize to him. Opening the door, she was shocked by what she saw. The video was still being broadcast in the office. Dr. Yan was standing in the middle, hugging and covering Dr. Mai with a blanket. The policewoman, with her mouth open and her eyes bulging, stood and looked at them, rooted to the spot. Yan asked her to leave because she had already seen enough. She ran out of the office with the words, Don't appear before my eyes, you brute. Having slammed the doors, she did not understand how she could witness such a thing. After all the events, Mai decided to take a shower to relax and forget all the bad things. Water helped to recover while returning to the office. Coming out of the shower, she saw Fung still sitting in his office. He was waiting for the key to his room that she had promised him. She had already completely forgotten about her promise. Throwing him the key, she showed him where the room for the tray was located. When he left, she suggested that she would stop calling him a creep if he taught her the resonant dance of butterflies. This is an ancient secret and he was not going to teach her, so she can call it as much as she wants. Going down the steps, he saw that someone was standing. It was a policewoman who was waiting to take him to his grandfather. Ye Lao was lying in Ward 706. Guards stood at the door. The Shanghai policewoman said to let Yan Fen go to her grandfather. Ye Lao was glad to see him and apologized that he could not get up to thank him because no matter how many different medical masters he knew, Yan was truly the best. Dr. Yang really wanted to know how it happened that Ye Lao became infected with toxins. The grandfather looked at his granddaughter because she was not aware of everything that was happening to him. He did not want to involve her in these matters. Therefore, he asked me to go and prepare pork and red date soup for him. But she did not want to cook anything from pork and was taken aback by his words. It was just an excuse for her to leave. She understood this, so she left them, leaving her grandfather to the doctor. Since Dr. Yang saved his life, he was ready to tell him, but what he would tell would not bring him any benefit. Ye Lao began his story, it was 40 years ago. A group of foreign mercenaries called the Black Tiger Mercenaries crossed the border illegally and were imprisoned for a long time. They were suspected of a larger conspiracy. In order to expel them by force, his group of 300 people was sent there. At that time, it was one of the best teams, and he was a major general there. And that's when the whole nightmare began. Before they had time to arrive, one of them was instantly killed. Someone hit him right in the head with a knife. There was no chance there. Raising their heads upward, they noticed a man. It was a mercenary who stood above on the rock. The whole group was perplexed. They thought what he could do against them alone, until he went down. His eyes were filled with malice, anger, and the desire to kill. In the first minutes of the fight with him, half of the group was wounded. Yalao looked and did not know how to defeat him and how this operation would end, how to defeat him. It was a monster who couldn't even speak normally. There were fewer and fewer of us left. Attempts to cope with him were failures. He saw from his back that they wanted to attack him. After only 20 minutes of fighting, they were destroyed by one person. The only person who was alive was Ye Lao. He was injected with an unknown drug directly into his heart. To return the information, he had to live on the streets. 
For 40 years he studied mercenaries, hoping to one day avenge the death of his missing comrades. For 40 years he suffered every night from the effects of the drug, living and dying every day mentally and physically. He is grateful that he had the honor of meeting Dr. Yang and that he will be able to be a normal person for a few more days. Yan was imbued with the story. He did not understand why Ye Lao did not tell his family about this to everyone. But Ye Lao didn't want to bother his family, so he carried it himself and asked the doctor not to tell this secret to anyone. Yan Feng knew what kind of drug it was. Serum, for short. This serum is currently being secretly researched by major medical institutions around the world and is being used to curb drug addiction and psychological illnesses. Even the military does not know about this serum, and a group belonging to Ping An Hospital is also working on it. The doctor said goodbye to the patient. Now that it's all over, he just needs to get better and not think about finding the mercenaries again. After all, they left a long time ago, Yan thought. Meanwhile, events near the hospital became tense. Dr. Mai found herself surrounded by journalists who wanted to know the details and did not allow her to pass because she saved Ye Lao. But she needed to go home and rest, and only then tell all the details. Having gone down to the parking lot, they discussed the situation that had developed all the way. The credit goes to Yang Feng, but he does not have a license to practice medicine. If you tell him that he is behind the operation, he will be kicked out. Not only will this not benefit the hospital, but it will also create problems for itself. On the way home, Mai decided to drink coffee, so she stopped at a coffee shop. She needs to rest, relax a little. The red team left the club. They lost to Yang Feng today. It was there that they drank because they lost to the Greens. They saw Mai standing at the coffee shop. A young girl was waiting for her coffee. She looked very beautiful at the coffee counter. One of them immediately had a plan. He called everyone and told them what he had come up with. From the very beginning, looking at them, you can understand that they are not pure in their thoughts. One of the players, their brother Wu, fell in love with Yang Feng's girl, and they decided to take her by force to their brother. Simply, by force, take it from one and give it to another. They couldn't take her roughly and by force, since there are a lot of guards now. Huang Mao had an idea, and they decided to follow it. Without any thoughts, Mai took her coffee and went to the car. They were watching her and were ready to implement the plan she had come up with. Getting behind the wheel, turning on the turn, Mai drove out onto the road and headed home. The girl could not even imagine what kind of situation awaited her ahead. One of the scum jumped right under her wheels. The doctor slammed on the brakes. It was very good that she had such a reaction. One of the guys deliberately blinded her eyes with a flashlight to confuse her and lure her out of the car. Mai tried to understand what happened because she didn't see anyone when she left, and she was sure that she managed to react in time. She did not harm anyone. The guy screamed that he had been shot down and was in pain. He shouted so loudly that everyone passing by believed him. Mai understood that it was fake, but at that moment, his brother appeared from behind the bushes, ran up to the man lying on the road, and began shouting for him to get up and open his eyes. He kept muttering to him that he had just entered Huaxia University, that he had just saved up enough money for school. Mai didn't believe it. She understood that they were pretending. Passers-by began to cry. The brothers were so pitiful. Mai was already sick of this show. She was as confident as possible she didn't do anything to him. The guy's brother shouted that he would take Mai to the police and she would not be able to escape, this killer. At one point, passers-by attacked the doctor's car and broke the glass. They started creating chaos, shaking the car, shouting that she was a killer. The red team took advantage of the moment, grabbed her, and began to take her away under the pretext of going to the police. She screamed that she was being kidnapped, but no one believed it. Everyone wanted the person responsible for the death to be punished. The crowd of people didn't want to listen to her, but she tried to tell them that she didn't hit anyone. They were the bad guys, and she needed to be saved. Suddenly, among the crowd, her gaze fell on a guy. It was Yang Feng. He looked at everything that was happening there. Just how he always determines the place and time where something will happen. With tears in her eyes, Mai screamed Yang Feng's name, begging her to be saved. She believed that he could prove her innocence. 
Hearing her screams, the team also turned around to see if he was really there. This was not part of their plans. He would definitely prevent them from achieving their plans. Yang walked up to them, and what else could he hear? It was his girlfriend Mai who was to blame. They were just doing justice, and they didn't need to be stopped. From what he heard, Yang was perplexed by what was happening when Mai managed to become his girlfriend. He obviously managed to miss something. Without him, they almost got married. Mai continued to cry, and Yang decided that if this was his girlfriend, how could he just sit and watch? He would have to act. He cannot leave defenseless and even his girlfriend. Yang Feng threatened the scum to let his girlfriend go, and then everyone would wait for the police together. The police will now determine who is right, who is wrong, who needs to be taken to the police station, and how to punish them. He approached the downed man, he continued to play that he had died, and his brother sat and wailed over him. What a wonderful performance that was put on. The Oscars are simply missing. Since he is a doctor, he decided to provide first aid to the downed man in case he could still be saved. After all, no one from the passers-by did this, but only shouted to punish Mai. Having pressed on the right place, the dead man who had been shot down came to life, immediately opened his eyes and began to scream. Magic healing, or rather their game, was exposed. It became clear to all passers-by that it was a pretense. The man was alive and well, and they really wanted to kidnap Mai. Now people demanded the police for a different reason, so that they would take the kidnappers away. The leader of their group was angry that Yang had interfered with him again, so he decided to attack him and beat him. What else could come into his stupid head to attack and beat? He flew up to him from behind and was about to stab him with a knife. Blood began to flow. Whose blood was it? Could it be that he managed to injure Yang Feng? Mai covered her eyes with her hands. What was happening was terrifying for her. She's a girl, and here it's so scary. Everything is covered in blood. The blood was not Yan's. He was able to point the knife at the attacker himself. Not very law-abiding citizens carry a knife with them. Huang Mao wanted to break Dr. Yang's arm, but he was too strong. It is beyond their power. Their plans have vanished like smoke. Jan told the scum to get out as quickly and as far as possible. He does not intend to tolerate them, much less meet them again. Juan shouted at his friends because he was furious that he couldn't beat the doctor. He felt dizzy. Nerves, resentment, blows all affected his condition. Hearing that someone was approaching, Juan turned around to look. It was Jiang Wu. He is in charge of the entire bar street. And it was a pretense to create trouble here. The fact that Yang beat his brother was nothing, but the fact that he dared to come onto his territory hurt him. He ordered his henchmen to destroy him. The whole herd ran towards Yang, both with bats and with bare hands. Mai was very afraid for him. She was afraid to see what they would do to him, and only briefly glanced in that direction. Zhang Wu turned his back, lit a cigarette, and waited for his men to deal with Yan. I thought that they managed it so quickly, and asked to check if he was really broken. But behind him were not his dogs, but Yan. His degree of surprise knew no bounds. He could not believe it. Yan hit him with a tambourine with all his might, so that even drool rolled out of his mouth. The Wu gang regained consciousness and were approaching. Yan kicked their gang to show them how much of a gangster he was. He was still too young for leadership. Everyone started asking how Wu was after the blow, but he stood there so he'll be fine, he's a real man. Jiang Wu ordered no one to touch him. He stood there and understood what had happened. Because of a kick to the bladder, Wu shits himself. His team began to cover their noses, but he kept thinking about who did this to him. Yan said that this is not the end and they will see each other later. He will definitely come. But for now, Wu can call even more people. Joyful Yang ran to supposedly his girlfriend, Mai, and the team of scum was thinking what to do with this too-good Yan. Wu decided to wait until he came first, and at the same time, find out what he was up to. After the event, Yang approached Mai. He decided to fool around and get to know her again. It's like their meeting was an accident, and they are complete strangers. They should get to know each other again. They are now a guy and a girl. Finally, Mai wanted to tell him about what was shown on the news. It was very important. The hospital gave Mai credit for the surgery because Yang was not certified to practice medicine. If everyone knows that he saved Ye Lao, it will not benefit him or the hospital. 
They couldn't find a suitable solution, so he can ask for anything at the hospital. The hospital will do everything they can to make sure he doesn't hate them. There was a minute of silence between them. Each did not know what to say next. Yan didn't care about the reporters. He would prefer that Mai would give him the rest of her life, and he would be responsible for her. Mai is not ready to agree to this. She would never give up the rest of her life to a random person like Yang. And she drove him away. At this time, the group grabbed Zhang Wu on the head for being weaklings, that they couldn't stand up for themselves or for him. Wu was furious. He said that he would pay them for a well-made robot, and the work was not only not completed, but completely overwhelmed. Zhang sent his people to buy a few more pants, or better yet, diapers, since he still continued to leak. From the young doctor, he did something wrong. Yan came to them as promised. He didn't have to wait long. They had a plan to first knock him out, then tie him up. The whole crowd wanted to see if he fought well. Let's see if he can cope with a bunch of prepared bodies. Taking the bits, taking the positions that they had agreed upon earlier, they waited for the door to open. We talked through the sequence a hundred times. Who does what? Unexpectedly for them, the doctor kicks the door down, demolishing everything in his path and even them. How could this be? Was the only thought. After all, their plan was wonderful, but it turned out to be a failure. Sweat flowed down his head. His arms and legs trembled with fear. There was nothing left to do but flatter Ian. They understood there was no point in going against him. Wu understood everything and was ready to serve him. But Yan did not like treacherous people. Looking with a disapproving look, he told me his demands. Half a million dollars for car repairs, emotional distress, his services in three days. They have only three days to fulfill his conditions. The head of the gang could not scrape together how much money during such a period. Most of the money he earned is given to his boss, Wu Yang Jin, top manager Shizukai. The rest is barely enough to feed his brothers. If you don't pay the boss, he will make the group suffer. If he finds out through someone, then he will get into trouble. Feng didn't care. Having explained everything, he left them and left. He will not wait for anyone, work only on his terms. If Wu pays in three days, the doctor will cure his incontinence, otherwise he will have to wear a diaper for the rest of his life. Yan walked down the hall in a lab coat. Although the salary was not high, the work was decent. And there was a chance to meet a lot of people at Dragon Pharma. First of all, I went to see Ye Lao. He saved his life. I wanted to ask how he was feeling. The patient was not alone, but he was glad to see the doctor. He had two guests. The guests were surprised that the doctor was so young and thanked him for the work done. His badge said intern, which made them a little doubtful. Ye Lao felt good. There was no discomfort. Yang Feng saved his life. All the bad things were left behind. In gratitude for the saved life, the hero gave the doctor a medal, and for some reason the guests in the ward became nervous. It was clear that they were not happy about such a gift for the young doctor. It was not a valuable thing, but it must be kept safe. It may come in handy in the future if there is a difficult situation. Ten years of working as a mercenary told Ye Lao that Yan was the person who could use her. He understood that Yang Feng was not just a person, he was something more. The grandchildren were angry. How could they give away a gold medal? Is it really impossible to just give money as gratitude? After all, this medal is too expensive a gift. They would like to leave it in the family. Ye Lao did not want to discuss his decision and asked his grandchildren to go home. We checked on him, made sure that everything was fine with him, and he could go home. Anger and greed burst through them from the very middle. The grandfather's actions seemed outrageous to them. Having embroidered from the chamber, Yang Feng examined the medal from all sides. I wonder what kind of medal this is and why it went to him. May interrupted the examination by calling out to him. She caught up with him and they continued their journey together. I couldn't help but make fun of her, calling her my beloved. They came to an agreement to forget yesterday and not remember. Mai was angry that Yang was not too serious. His jokes are sometimes too much and she gets embarrassed by them and this makes her angry. In the evening, she didn't want to go to the alumni meeting alone, so she decided to invite him with her. Ian, saying that he didn't like that and of course wouldn't go, refused to join us. Suddenly, Mai sat down and began to whine. The car has broken down. 
she will have to take a taxi. The driver will be a person with dark intentions who can rob her, or someone from her classmates has changed for the worse. And she is a beautiful, lonely girl, so what can she do alone? No matter what she mumbles, you need to agree. And in some ways, she was definitely right. There's no point in a beautiful girl going to such events alone. Wu was in a diaper day and night like a small child. Now we have entered into an unequal battle and now we have to suffer. His brothers decided to take him to the hospital to find more experts and cure him. They need a healthy brother and leader. Yan came to him to borrow a car for a couple of days. He was the first person who came to his mind. Naturally, he was not against it. But our doctor needed to take the girl to a classmate's party. Beautiful May was waiting for her companion and was already frozen. People pay attention to her, and she was already beginning to think that Yan had decided to set her up. Yan flies up at speed in a beautiful car to pick up his companion. He saw Mai waiting and very beautiful. She was surprised to see such a car, had it really been stolen. Where does he get the money for such luxury? The meeting will be in an expensive hotel, and Yang Feng better wear a pantsuit, because in this form, he will be laughed at. The organizer of the evening is Lin Hao, the rich son of the famous owners of the Zhonghai Company. He called her, so she goes, and now she worries about Yan. But it doesn't matter to him. May became sad. She herself didn't really want to go there. After all, she remembers all the meetings that happened before. It was a luxurious hotel. It felt like it was not a reunion, but a charity evening for millionaires. Climbing up the steps, they saw people. Their clothes were strikingly different from what Jan was wearing. A man was waiting for Mai at the entrance. It was Hao who sent him so that she would not get lost and there would be enough space for her. He showered a bunch of compliments towards Mai and asked who came with her. She explained that this was her friend. And he will be at the meeting with them? He will accompany her. He didn't want Yan to go with them, because it was too much to take a friend's classmates to a meeting, especially since Brother Howe would be dissatisfied. These words angered and disappointed Mai. She decided to leave. She even turned around to follow the exit. Everything didn't go according to plan. She shouldn't have left. After all, Howe had plans for her. She remained just as stubborn as when she was studying at the university. Music was playing in the club. The party was in full swing. The company sat drinking drinks and talking. All attention was attached to Howe. Howe still lived in grand style, and spending several hundred thousand on small people was nothing for him. Everyone raised a toast to him to respect him. The door opened and Qiu Yan entered the hall. Everyone paid attention since they had not seen her for a long time. Yan was also with her. The girls immediately became envious, began to say flattering compliments and naturally envy. They always didn't like her. She was a smart beauty. Well, Yan didn't go unnoticed. Everyone was whispering whether this guy Q Yan was an idiot. Everyone really hasn't seen each other for a long time. And it was only thanks to Lin Hao's generosity that everyone gathered here and wanted to meet the Q Yan guy. But he was not her boyfriend. He was a colleague who gave her a ride because her car broke down. The girls whispered behind her back that she had lived her whole life going through too much and the guy should have been better. But what happened? That is, he is an ordinary doctor and all the clothes he wears are no more expensive than 200 yuan. They raised their glasses. They finally managed to get together all together because this rarely happens. And today, no one will leave this party sober. Everyone raised their glasses and drank to the bottom. The atmosphere of the evening was to get drunk. How loved Q Yan since university. But then he was a fool. He often acts like an immature youth, but he would like them to forget the affairs of the past and become friends again. After drinking a glass, we buried the hatchet. May forgot everything a long time ago. Everything is in the past. She didn't plan to drink a lot, and if he hadn't paid attention to anyone else besides her... Hua understood that he had angered the beauty of the course with his demagoguery, but he could not understand why she did not like him from the very beginning of her studies at the university. Lin Hao got angry because she got close to this loser and not him. She also brought him with her, this completely left-wing man, to provoke her. And this all means that Hao is much worse than a loser. Anger and rage filled me. My eyes turned red. Now something will happen. 
What an interesting show. It was necessary to calm them down already because his words hurt everyone. Yang Feng had the nerve to say such things to Lin Hao. The last time that the one who dared to say such a thing to Lin Hao is now in a grave at a depth of two meters. There is no road to heaven for him, and the gates of hell have already been passed. Hao didn't know whether he was ignorant or just a fool. Yang Feng is now intact only while he is under his girlfriend's skirt. He won't be asked to leave this place for Chu Yan, so he can have fun. Yan's ability to make jokes was in no way inferior to Hao, and the fact that he is so rich does not mean that Chu Yan should belong to him. But he already understood that. Something was happening in the background, there were some screams. One of the guests went beyond the bounds of decency, it was simply shamelessness. They were not in a place where they could do everything that came to mind. Hao got mad, he ran up to the girl and hit her. She fell on the table. And so it will be with everyone who dares to say that this is a place where everyone cannot do what they want. All the guests noticed. They were perplexed. His father is the union chairman of Zhonghai Company, and if it weren't for him and Hao, everyone wouldn't be able to visit this damn hotel. The waitress should call the boss to ask for forgiveness because she dared to treat his friend rudely. The girl ran away. The guests applauded Hao's coolness. Next on the plan are dancing and alcohol. He was on a pedestal of glory, but most of all he was worried about what Mai thought about it. How? Powerful. Saved his good friend from slander and evil, because some ignorant and uneducated people need to be shown where their place is. Drink to Hao, and to his wonderful words and actions. Looking at each other, Yang Feng and Mai understood that they had the same thought between them, that it was time for them to go home. In tears and hysterics, the waitress told the owner what happened in the hall, how they offended her, what they said, and who it was. She is one of his best employees. Their disgusting angered him. For her sake, he will restore justice, but for now she will rest for a couple of days at home and receive payments for medical expenses. Gratitude to the boss knew no bounds. He once again proved his excellent attitude towards staff and employees. Mrs. Bai, the manager of the hotel, will go into the hall to join the celebrants. Everyone was already very drunk. The alumni meeting turned into a gathering of rednecks. From the outside, they looked not like adults, but like a crowd of brainless children. They played games with drinking, in which Hao naturally won. Mai and Yan decided to quietly get out of there. They didn't like everything that was happening there. While no one was watching them, they slowly approached the exit door. Just wanting to open the door unnoticed, the handle itself went down. It was the hotel manager, Miss Bai. They were left for a while. Miss Bai needed them for some important matter. The plan did not work out, unfortunately. The hotel manager ruined everything. They were almost able to leave this establishment. The manager wanted to invite those who wanted to meet him into the boss's office. But how come how himself is called to the boss, and not he crawls to him? This outraged the young man. Some manager wants to fool them and Hao will not stoop to such a thing, so it will be right if he comes down here to him. The drunken crowd shouted, Call your boss! Dance a strip tease! They were uncontrollable. They behaved like they were in the cheapest brothel. Lady Bai ordered the guards to take everyone, without going over whether he is guilty or not. Did they really think to beat them because there were only two guards? And didn't they know who Hao's father was? The security didn't care who was whose son, brother, matchmaker. They had the task of taking everyone, and whoever resisted, received it. Minus one, screaming and threatening the loudest, lay down to rest after communicating with one of Miss Bay's people. The people got scared and started screaming, and chaos began around them. Something incomprehensible was happening. Everyone should follow the guards, in an amicable way, so that they don't have to drag everyone off them one by one. He will make these mongrels regret this situation, but he will go with them to their boss. Having gone upstairs, they went to the boss. He was in Tianjia's room. Hao opened the door with his foot and flew into the office, not seeing anything in front of him from anger. Who is the boss here? Does he know the chairman of the trade union, Lin Bao? And does he understand that tomorrow his hotel will be razed to the ground? There is no need to be so nervous. Everyone should calm down. Running into the room, they did not expect to see Wu Yang Jin in front of them. An outstanding figure in Zhonghai, there is no one who does not know him. And he knew Hao's father. Deep shock, because he himself can ask Father Hao to show him respect. 
Everyone began to heatedly discuss how this could be, why Wu Yang Jin is the owner, that Hao's father is nobody compared to him, that there was no need to follow him because Lin Hao slipped. They hoped that nothing would happen to them because they didn't beat people. Hao began to justify himself that he did this only because his staff hit his friend and the bodyguard also stunned his friend without much conversation. He asked Jin to explain everything that happened, how it could have happened since he was a very significant figure in Zhong Hai. How courageous Hao is, he had the courage to boast to Wu Yang. There is no need to consider Jin an idiot and distort the truth. Moreover, he is so big, and everyone is dad, dad. Today, they will seriously deal with him on their own. Hao's friends are dishonest, but when they hit him once, he immediately became quiet, and he can deal with the rest himself. Hao insulted their employee but only cares about his father. Therefore, the owner wanted his father to personally call him to order. All the rest must kneel down and crawl out of here on their knees and never appear in this hotel again, even at a distance of half a step. The guests didn't want to embarrass themselves like that. Why on earth would they? We decided not to contact Lin Hao anymore. It sucks. Jin began to count to three. Whoever does not kneel will have his legs broken. During the counting, the bodyguard stretched his hands for those who disobeyed. Hao turned around and went to the exit first, leaving the others there. The time they were given was running out. Mai and Yan didn't know what to do. Everyone began to kneel down and bow, leaving the room crawling. Mei is at a loss how they could so easily agree to this demand. One by one, people crawled out of the room on their knees, bowing their heads. Yan said that they needed to go, hugged her and told her not to be afraid of anything because he was nearby. They started taking steps with their feet without complying with the demands. It seems that they did not understand Jin's words. One way or another, he did not like to repeat the same thing. But this was a conflict that had nothing to do with these two, and they also do not like to repeat themselves. Couldn't this guy have already run out and pretended to be a hose? But no one cared about them because they wanted to get out faster and the boys turned out to have a backbone. The bodyguard began to fulfill the owner's words and break the legs of those who contradicted, and he paid for it, receiving nuts from Yan. Jin realized that from the very beginning he had excellent makings. He wanted to play a game, a battle of who is stronger. Yan Feng agreed to join the company, but on the condition that his girlfriend would leave, one way or another she was not interested in him. He understood the degree of difficulty that awaited him. The terms were accepted, Mai was sent out the door, leaving Yan there. Thanks to Yang, everyone else will now get out easier and leave faster. They didn't realize how strong he was, but he probably hadn't heard about how Wu Yang Jin's career began. If everyone is ready, then we open the door. The handle dropped, the door opened, and out came a big man. Biao Ma, fierce and impenetrable, strong as a bull. The smaller one, Hao, like shadow and wind, with a Zigua knife, killed countless people. Seeing them, Yan was surprised. They didn't look too dangerous. The boss did the guy a great honor that these two were still able to come. These two are bodyguards who have been following Jin for many years. The martial artist cannot handle them. If Yan can hold out against them and not die, then he will win. Yan fell to the ground, taking a position. Hao did not understand what kind of stance this was, what kind of technique it was. Naturally, they didn't see her. This is a unique technique passed down from generation to generation in the Yang family. The hotel manager and the boss were at a loss. They did not understand what was happening. This was one of the cheating abilities to resist the enemy. Strike a flying falcon. Everyone laughed. It was like radio gymnastics for primary school. Kids do this at school. Hao got angry at that little son of a bitch. Yan does not dare joke with them. Today he will become a corpse. But he is not afraid of them at all. The blow. The falcon taking off in action, Yan. What Hao said there that he is like a shadow and the wind. One of the bodyguards was the smaller one who didn't understand what the guy was doing. Hao decided to demonstrate the power of his sword. What kind of skill level is this that Yan couldn't even hit them? For a second, without realizing how it happened... Hao washed himself with blood, and the big guy, Biao Ma, lay on the floor from one blow and could not get up. Jin looked at what was happening. Was it really happening in reality? Contrary to Jin's expectations, the guy was able to take down these two masters without even breaking a sweat. 
He wanted to know the guy's name. Jan is not one for those who hide under someone else's name, so he told his first and last name. Is he really the same Yang Feng from Ping An Hospital? The doctor could not understand how they knew his name and where he worked. Everyone reassured Chu Yan, no one would kill Yang Feng, he would escape with wounds, she brought him here and showed him how many luxurious things. Hao disgraced himself in front of everyone, even though he was pressed face down to the ground, he remembered this bastard. The door opened, and everyone saw Yang Feng appear, accompanied by the boss and the hotel manager. There was a huge misunderstanding. They asked him for forgiveness. Tomorrow they will send gifts as an apology. They are always happy to see him in their establishment. Every time he visits, he will have a 50% discount. How is this possible? Okiang Jin personally sees off Yang Feng. They said goodbye, wishing them a good journey and to be careful. Mr. Wu was afraid that there was someone else behind Mr. Yi. He is not one of those people who can be seduced by anything. If Jin can only stomp his foot to make the city of Zhonghai tremble, then if Mr. Ye stomps, perhaps the whole of China will tremble. Yang Feng can save them from Mr. Ye. They need to enlist his protection, especially since he has excellent medical skills. Even if they fail to lure Feng to their side, the main thing is to prevent him from becoming their enemy. Pinzan Hospital. In the hall where running is prohibited, everyone is running somewhere. The deputy head physician of the hospital urged everyone to speed up. Very soon the president will be brought to them, so they need to move and everyone get together immediately. Han Shiwei has completely gone crazy. From the position of deputy head, it is obvious that he decided to suck up. But this does not mean that everyone needs to forget about other patients and run to meet the president and examine him. The president's motorcade arrived, all the medical staff lined up to greet him. They opened the car door and everyone shouted sternly in one voice that they were glad to welcome President Mu to their hospital. She is probably tired from the road. She needs to be more careful when getting out of the car. Gratitude could be heard in the background for her sponsorship of their hospital. It turns out they always had such a beautiful president. It's a pity that they can only dream of such a girl. Ian didn't go down with everyone. He didn't want to go out. He calmly drank coffee and watched what was happening from the window. Next time you shouldn't greet her so pompously. Let the doctors be with the patients at this time. Hearing that Yang Feng was able to cure Mr. Ye, she came not only to undergo an examination, but also to meet him. After all, he is the treasure of their corporation. Han Shiwei kept buzzing in President Mu's ears that Yang was only able to cure Mr. Ye because it was a matter of Mr. Ye's stamina. Mu stopped. Zhang Zhongde himself, the chairman of the Longyao Corporation and a luminary of medicine, was unable to understand the diagnosis, and Han wants to say that Yang Feng was simply lucky, and Chief Physician Li does not deserve the position. This angered her. Han did not know that Zhang Zhongde was trying to cure Mr. Ye. If Zhang was powerless, then this means that there was a split in the Longyao Corporation. It is not surprising that they threw him half dead, if he had died in the hospital, they would have shifted all the responsibility onto them. The hospital has all the diagnostic equipment. They will definitely help her. Patient care is also provided to a high standard. In all of Zhonghai, you cannot find better doctor's offices than theirs. Of course, there is still room to grow. But the head physician Li is all about business, always stopping at little things. While Han Shiwei cannot exceed his powers. The most important thing for him is to attract a large number of first-class specialists to their hospital and provide them with the best working conditions. A lot of effort was spent to recreate such a pleasant working environment. Next was Yang Feng's office. President Mu was invited to enter there. Opening the door, they saw a doctor who was sitting at the computer and looking at naked girls. Han was horrified that he would allow himself to do this in the workplace. Ian did research. It wasn't what they thought. President Mu was surprised that he was so young. There was a minute pause. Everyone didn't know what to say or what to do at that moment. President Mu no longer wanted to be there and decided to leave the office and leave. The girl won't just leave it like that. She will call Yang to her office. But for now, everyone is free except Suju. It seems that employees are no longer needed. But there are already a lot of patients waiting for them. Work is work, and Han Shiwei will still say that they are slacking. Upset Mai came to Yang. 
sadly sat down on his table and began to complain. Suddenly, she felt that all the efforts were pointless. All she did was study. She went abroad to improve her skills, all for the sake of a bright future. And he is President Mu, who is a little older than her and has already become the president of Long Yao Corporation. And also how beautiful she is, May and two lives are not enough to achieve such heights. It would be better for her to find a husband, sit at home and take care of the family, and Ian is ready to offer her his candidacy. What does Yang have in common with a good husband? Only a blind woman would covet him. Their conversation was interrupted. The president wanted to see him in the conference room. Further events will develop in the conference room to which Ian is already approaching. She wanted to know how he managed to cure Mr. Ye of him, because they had already discussed his work with Deputy Han. The great doctor Zhang Zhongde could not cope with the disease. It is unimaginable how Yang Feng was able to turn everything for the better for himself. It was not clear, since Zhang is such an excellent doctor, so all-knowing, why the president came all this long way to ask Yang and not ask Zhang herself. Mu's assistant made a remark that he should not allow him to speak in such a tone with her boss. The president said everything is fine. Let him continue to talk. Firstly, a year ago he heard that Zheng diagnosed Mr. Ye, but could not cure him. Moreover, this time the chairman knew nothing about Mr. Ye's serious condition. It feels like they are planning to blame everything on Pinzan Hospital. Secondly, this Dr. Jang of theirs thinks about his achievements and is not at all interested in patience, literally at all. This begs the question of whether he is worthy of the title of medical luminary. President Mu accepted these words and continued to listen. Thirdly, the corporation, when it sees a problem, immediately thinks about its own benefit, does not care about its patients at all, and they also dare to shout at conscientious doctors. Ian believed that if we take everything he said, then are they really worthy of working in the medical field? After the conversation, President Mu set off. Only after crashing, the driver, having slowed down, did not understand what was happening. A car flew towards the hospital at full speed, so much so that even the president's driver was frightened by their driving. President Mu's motorcade blocked the motorcade that arrived at the hospital. What is happening? Yang walked down the hall and thought about the conversation. This president is so narcissistic. She said two words, and he was already angry. She seems to be mean at heart. His only question was why the president wants to conduct research with blood serum. The words of her assistant popped into my head, who said that the president would not listen to him in the corporation. Even excellent personnel do not stay in office. And he only cares about himself, although all he does is lose opportunities. Continuing to scroll through the conversation... Ian realized that he had made her nervous, but besides this, he had lost the chance to earn some money. Mai ran up to Yang, saying that the patient was rebelling at the entrance. We need to go take a look. No one understood what happened there, whether they really attacked the doctors. At the entrance, there was a woman on her knees with a small child in her arms, surrounded by her bodyguards. They didn't want to admit the child to this clinic, but they were her last hope. She was sent for examination to Zhongde, because he deals with incurable cases. If they take her child, then this will be equated with resistance to the activities of Zhang Zhonghe, and all the bad things will fly to the hospital. The woman was in tears and couldn't understand whether all medicine in Zhonghai rested on one Zhang Zhongde. They have already visited more than a dozen hospitals. Everyone said the same thing. Are all doctors just pathetic pawns, puppets? She was desperate. Everyone felt sorry for them, but there was nothing to be done. They could not take them. The mother drowned in tears. This was her last chance. The child's life was in the balance. The woman gave the child into the hands of an angel. She had already resigned herself to letting him go to heaven. The angel picked up the child and took him to him. The mother, in despair, simply cried incessantly. Opening her eyes, she saw that the child was not in the hands of an angel, but in the hands of a doctor. Who wanted to know what happened to him? Every minute was important. The question was life or death. Therefore, Yang Feng decided to take on the child under his own responsibility, although the deputy head physician was against it. The child's mother began to tell her that three days ago her son went hiking in the mountains. There he ate some kind of mushroom and got poisoned. 
and began to sleep for a long time. At first, she decided that nothing serious had happened to him. Only yesterday, he still didn't wake up. Then they went to Dr. Zhang, but he said that it was too late. The poison had spread throughout the body. President Mu and his assistant watched what was happening. Does he really think that since he was able to cure Mr. Ye, he became omnipotent? And if Dr. Zhang had heard him right now, he would have been fired instantly. Ian undressed the guy right there. He began to examine him. Everything was bad. Her son already suffers from jaundice. He has protein in his urine and, in addition, develops hepaosplenomegaly. This type of poison dissolves in the blood. Due to the fact that the action of the poison is very long, the boy needs to be operated on immediately. Yang wants to perform an operation right here, and Dr. Mai would assist him. But they didn't even examine him properly. They should at least feel him. The deputy head physician did not allow this. Because if something happened, Dr. Yang would be responsible, but it would also affect the clinic. But neither the child's mother nor Dr. Yan wanted to listen to him and told him to shut up. The deputy head physician was filled with anger. He left, but promised to return. Quan, you need to prepare a saline solution and find an enema to induce vomiting in the child. Dr. Yan opened his mouth to the patient. Every second counts. There were more and more people at the entrance to Pinzan Hospital. Everyone was wondering if he could really do it. Patience was needed, but the boy's well-being deteriorated sharply. Yang Feng induced vomiting. He did not stop doing it. Shock content Yang made the boy vomit so much, but more was needed. Qiu Yan, you need to give the boy an enema, Yang ordered. Dr. Mai is hooked. Why is he pointing it out to her? But it is obvious that she is now his assistant. But this is only today. But apparently Jan doesn't know how to treat the patient. She will definitely be punished for helping. This is a simple treatment. If he does any good, I wonder how long it will take for him to get better. People watched from all sides and waited for the result. Well, almost everything worked out. The enema worked. Let's forget about morals and norms if we look at what is happening. The aromas wafted through the crowd. Everyone will soon be vomiting themselves. At that previous doctor, neither vomiting nor an enema had any effect. Yan told his mother not to worry. They cleansed him to remove toxins from his body. The real treatment will begin right now. Yan took out nail scissors, but the people who were nearby did not understand why they were there and how they would help remove the poison. Everyone thinks that there is no hope of saving the boy. Yan cut his finger. Several years ago, Dr. Yang encountered a similar effect when blood is mixed with poison. It is not clear for what reason, perhaps because of that knowledge about life in years. He gave the little child his blood. Apparently, blood can cleanse the body of poison. After this, you need to massage six points. This should be done to improve blood circulation. Everyone was waiting for the effect, but nothing happened. Surely his technique shouldn't work yet. The baby began to open his eyes, cry and call for his mother. Finally, a miracle happened. The mother was so happy. Her son was finally healthy. Dr. Yang is the best in the world. She wants to thank him. She is ready to give him everything, a sports car, a mansion, a yacht, or any wish. But Yan didn't want anything, because he is a simple doctor, and this is his duty. President Mu didn't understand how he was able to save a hopeless person for the second time. He's actually a human being. Maybe it's worth checking him out. But she'll figure that out a little later. Mai thought Yang was greedy. Last time, he never taught her how to use the butterfly dance resonance. Eve's handled everything with ease this time. But Dr. Yang taught. She just didn't understand. She doesn't have the ability to do it. He needs to go because he has a morning shift. May got nervous. He's a stingy fellow. Let him hiccup. He'll wait with her. Turning on full music, Ian drove through the streets of the city. I was driving and thinking about what to do today. Where to go today? Suddenly, in the middle of the road, he saw three men. They stopped his car. One of them wanted to talk. Ian was in a hurry, so he asked them to quickly and directly say what they really wanted from him. These were messengers from Zhang Zhongde. He already knew that Yang was able to cure that child who was poisoned by a mushroom today. He wanted Ian to know his place. And then he would definitely not be left a fool. After all, he must understand who should treat people. But Dr. Yang did not understand at all what he wanted to tell him. And what will they do about it?
Since he did not understand the words, then everything becomes simpler. They decided to show him by force who is in charge. No one had any doubts. Dr. Yang went home safe and sound. But the envoys of Dr. Zhang Zhongde were left lying on the road, unconscious and covered in blood. Yang Feng knows medicine and also martial arts, and his cretins also dared to appear in front of their boss, and even with twisted joints. They asked Dr. Zhang for help. He will help them this time, but then let them blame themselves, and it will help only because they have been on his side for many years. The gratitude of the slaves was maximum towards their master. Dr. Zhang Zhongde began to heal his mercenaries. He had to set every cartilage, every joint. The ridge seemed to be connected along a small ridge, one by one, stepping into place, allowing my back to finally feel lighter. Then he began to isolate the cervical cartilages, soon connecting all the parts of his slave's body. Now they are much better. They can even move. Yes, indeed, they can move. Dr. Zhang Zhongde is great. But as soon as the doctor finished, he released the patient. How the strange situation happened. Everything was fine. What happened? The mercenary fell to the floor. The treatment did not help. Pins in hospital next day. The head physician agreed with Feng's conditions, but he was still young, although he learned to treat well and quickly. In the future, he should not be afraid to stand out from others. Did the head physician really tell him that because he is afraid that someone lower in position will be able to replace him? Indeed, he called Feng for a reason. After all, even the clever ones fall under the distribution. In the morning, they called from the headquarters and said that President Mu was waiting for Yang Feng and he needed to call Secretary Suzhu, taking the number on the business card. The head physician gave advice to the doctor. This is a great opportunity and should not be missed. Heading to the car, the doctor was wondering why President Mu needed him. Last time he offended her. Perhaps she wants to fire him, although this cannot be. But on the other hand, then why is this lady calling him? The headquarters office is located in the city. He's finished. There are a lot of police in the city. The last time he used a fake driver's license was to drive an ambulance. If he gets caught, there will be problems. The police will immediately understand that the license is fake, but the bus will take forever, and a taxi will be expensive. Yang thought about all the options and got into Jiang Wu's car. Next, we moved to Jiang's house. Yang Feng came to Jiang and started knocking on his door so that he would let him in. He did not want to open the door for him. He asked for a few more days. He would soon accumulate 500,000. Ian had already forgotten about this debt. There was no need to be in such a hurry. The doctor just wanted to take his car. Jang opened the door slightly to see if it was really Brother Yang. The whole gang had stockings on their heads and looked scared, as if they were hiding. I wonder where they got together in this form, like a group of mafiosi. They had no choice, so they decided to go rob. They should have repaid the debt to Yang Feng. Jang would not want to stoop to this level, but there is no way he can accumulate 500 grand. Yang just wanted to intimidate them with 500,000. There is no need to make him look like some kind of freak. Just let them pay to fix the car. That will be enough. Zhang is grateful for such debt forgiveness, but there is still one small moment of incontinence left. It stresses him out. He wants to become a normal person again. Yang is not heartless. If Zhang later shows his good side, then there will be no more problems. He will return everything back to the way it was. The doctor wanted Zhang to show the way if he knew the city. Of course he knows the city. He grew up in it. You just need to tell him where to go, and he will lead him to the right place, better than any taxi driver. Brother Yang did something to him. The incontinence stopped, and now Zhang will feel better. Ian was so cool, he knew how to fight and heal too. It wouldn't hurt for them to be friends. Zhang rushed Yang around the city quickly as he was in a hurry. He needs to get there quickly. They have already been filmed four times. Here they are already detained after one time. Apparently, Zhang has not committed any violation here yet. But he drove quickly so as not to be late and not let Yang Feng down. They were stuck in a traffic jam. There were a lot of roads to choose that were safe. So they decided that this was a great line in Homeless Mars. It was said on the radio that a press conference organized by the outstanding Dr. Zhang Zhongde would take place this evening. This event attracts enormous public attention. The development of medicine will be discussed. This is all to launder money. 
They said that the money raised from tickets will be used to provide financial assistance to young children who live in mountainous areas. But this is all nonsense. One ticket costs a million. These money bags found a black hole for money, oh, that Zhang Zhongde. Just to put money in your pocket, main directorate. Zhang is very surprised that they came here. It will be difficult for ordinary people to get out of this place. At the entrance, Yang was called out by the president's assistant. She was surprised that he had arrived so early. President Mu was at a meeting. He will be taken to the break room. Ian warned that he was not alone, but with a friend who brought him there. Zhang was so delighted that his brother was so cool that they were even met. I even decided to capture the moment in a selfie that they were greeted as important guests and where they were. Zhang felt like he was in an amusement park, but this was all because he came to such a place for the first time. I really wanted to show off my photos to my friends. Yang joked at Zhang, and he believed everything he said, it's time for him to grow up. Age doesn't mean anything, Zhang thought so. He looked at his friends. He takes them to cafes to eat. Those friends who are older than him also have older friends, and those who are older and so on in a chain that he already, I want to cry. Don't think that Zhanghai is a small town. In fact, there are a lot of different people here, a lot of cool ones. Even here, the break room is full of people who are dangerous to mess with. But Ian quickly made a career, and you need to be careful. Zhang froze in place like a ghost. The doctor could not understand what was happening and what was happening. Last time Yang talked with Oh Yas King, the girl who stood in front was his closest confidant. Zhang caught a glimpse of her one day. Despite the fact that she is a woman, she surpasses several men in her work. She is strong, and once she gets angry, they are corpses. The girl noticed them. Zhang was terribly afraid of her and asked her to bow her head and not look at her. She greeted sweetly, inquired about Dr. Yang's business, and Zhang wanted to run away from fear. At the moment of conversation, Zhang realized that they knew Miss Bei. This shocked him. He even knows such people, goes to such places. He is even more complex than he seems. Bei heard that Dr. Yang refused the invitation. Did he really change his mind and come to get a ticket to the conference with Dr. Zhang Zhongde? He explained to her that the boss called him, and that's all. Mrs. Bei had one extra ticket left. In general, Mr. Ouyang Jing wanted to invite someone, but that person was already busy with something. She suggested that Yang Feng not refuse and take the ticket for himself. It seems to her that he will need it. If he changes his mind and wants to come, he will have a ticket in his hands. Sitting in the waiting room, Zhang looked at Dr. Yang like that simply without taking his eyes off, and without even blinking, he was impressed with him. He is next to such a person. Yang even hit him so that he would come to his senses, and he himself had already been called into the office where President Mu was waiting. What a conversation and what awaits him ahead. President Mu had a sore throat. Her assistant offered to help her with something. Perhaps you can talk to the young doctor yourself. But she wanted to do everything herself, so she refused help. She needs to talk to him herself. It will be better. Their conversation was interrupted by a knock on the door. It was Mr. Yang. Having prepared herself, she invited him to enter, and he went into the office. Sitting down at the table, taking tea in my hands, there was a moment of silence. It was difficult for her to start a conversation, and he did not even understand what it would be about. But there is no need to hesitate. After all, she didn't call him just to sit and drink tea. If he is so smart then there is no need to beat around the bush. She started talking. She hopes that he will not tarnish the name of Zhang Zhongde in any way. And if he wants something as compensation, then let him say it. They are ready for any conditions, as long as the name of the great doctor remains as before on the list of the best of the best. Dr. Yang sat in disbelief. I looked at her and understood when he managed to discredit his name. He deliberately did nothing about it. If he really were a highly qualified specialist, then no one would be able to shake his reputation. Neither words nor actions could do this. The president continued, Yang Feng is a capable guy, and she understands everything perfectly. But this is directly related to the corporation, and it is difficult for her to talk about it. Simply put, without Zhang Zhongde's influence, 
All shareholders of the corporation will immediately withdraw their investments. All research results will lose all significance and the company will disappear. She understands that this is not fair for him. So she asks what he wants in return. 100 million. This is the largest amount that President Mu can give. Dr. Yang looked at her carefully and then began to laugh at her words. President Mu could not understand how to react to his behavior and what he wanted to say. Dr. Yang refused. He did not agree to these conditions. A friend who was waiting in the lobby continued to take pictures of himself on his phone. Suddenly, Ian appeared in the frame. The business conversation was over, and he left President Mu's office. It seemed to Zhang that they had finished quickly and needed to return. Therefore, they will already go home. But Dr. Yang was not going to go. He thanked him for taking him, and he decided to stay for the conference with Zhang Zhongdei. After talking with President Mu, Mr. Yang Feng decided to attend the conference after all. Zhang Gu said that he wants to be with him, so he won't leave him here and leave. After all, Ian doesn't know anything here. He will be his guide. The taxi won't arrive at this time anyway, so he'll wait. After all, he is his brother, they went to eat. Zhang Gu knows a good place, where it's delicious and not far from here. This evening at the medical conference of Dr. Zhang Zhongdei, at a gala reception on the roof of the tallest building in all of Zhanghai. People came from all over, a crowd of cars, a crowd of people, a gorgeous place, the height of which made your head spin. It was a chic place, but people gathered here only with wealth. Zhang decided that he did not belong there. The whole atmosphere of the evening was putting pressure on him. He was afraid of disgracing Dr. Yang. Just when Mrs. Bei and Wu Yang Jing approached them, they said hello. Zhang was already sweating. Brother Yang knew them. Out of fright, he began to bow and greet each of them, and they had no idea who he was. People started calling for Mr. Wu Yang, so he had to leave them. Dr. Yang stood alone at the entrance, waiting for the conference time. He looked at the city from above while drinking a glass of wine. At this time, Wu Yang Jing was greeting the guests and President Lin came with his son, Lin Hao. Lin Hao said that his father talked a lot about him, and he was glad to meet them. Mr. Wu Yang laughed and said that his son speaks beautifully. A good air is growing up. Young Lin was bored. He was already fed up with these old people. He needs fun and alcohol, like at a high school reunion. When they entered the hall, Lin Hao turned around and noticed Yang standing with his back. He could not understand whether it was really him. If this is him, why is this guy even here? This is a conference of rich people. After all, he certainly couldn't afford a one million ticket. Lin Hao had a storm of emotions in his head. He believed that Yang had set him up last time, that some poor doctor has illegally entered this place, and he needs to put him in his place. He approached him and said that he did not expect to meet him here. Although what's surprising is that he's also a doctor, or rather just a minor intern. Ian didn't want him to touch him, and in general, what does it matter to him what he's doing here and who he is anyway? Everyone at this conference has their own affairs and interests. Lin Hao began to laugh and say that he had met the guards. And he decided to help the guards in their work. He wanted to see if Yang Fen had an entrance ticket with him. Standing at the top of the tower, Lin Hao did not lag behind Yang. He argued that there was no ticket after all, and he wanted to conduct security. He didn't expect this from him, that Yang Feng would come as a hare to such an event. Angrily demanded a ticket, otherwise he would call security and they would kick him out. He asked me to remember where he was. Dr. Yang was already starting to get nervous from these presentations. He called Hao to come closer. When Hao approached, he splashed a glass of wine at him, and he began to fall while dodging. And if something fell very high, Ian managed to step on his trouser leg, thereby preventing him from flying off. Hanging his head, he is very scared. How has no right to check whether Yang has a ticket or not? His head is down, shock in his eyes. But there is no understanding of what has been done. He will soon even begin to cry from fear. Yang Feng helped him escape and let him go. He, praying that he was alive, crawled away from the end of the roof. Having risen to his feet, he continued his claim that Ian had entered illegally and also wanted to kill him. He made a big noise. People began to converge. He demanded security and that she would throw the poor man out of here, since he didn't have a ticket. Someone from the crowd said that there is no need to call security. 
Lin Hao wanted to see the one who dared to stand up for this bastard. It was Mr. Wu Yang and Miss Bai. It was she who gave the invitation to Yang Feng, and you can't bore their guests. Lin Hao could not understand how this could be. The father ran to them with the words wretch and began to scold and beat him. Last time his son angered Mr. Wu Yang, he did not punish him. And now he started again because he doesn't really want to die. He bowed his son to his knees and ordered him to ask Mr. Wu Yang and Miss Bei for forgiveness. Also under Yang Fen. President Lin, there is no need to be so angry. Children are usually stupid. His son only stumbled a little, but that was inevitable. Having apologized for his son for making him angry, President Lin kicked the crappy boy out. Mr. Wu Yang was surprised. He did not expect such a turn of events. Since he scolded his son, it means that Mr. Lin was not at all stupid for driving him away. Dr. Yang was very grateful that they stood up for him and supported him. Miss Bei looked flirtatiously. She did it for him. She behaved more strictly than Mr. Wu Yang. Did she need to treat Lin Hao like that? Miss Bei was sure that there was nothing wrong with this, especially since everything went well. It was just her feminine sixth sense that told her that Yang Fen was not simple. It seemed to her that one day this young doctor would be useful to them. President Mu entered the hall. Lin rushed to thank him for the opportunity to learn something here, and he would do his best. The head of Han started shouting from the crowd. Lin didn't understand. What do you mean, the head? Everyone paid attention to her. No one was left without following her gaze. Hundreds of compliments flew from the crowd that she was the most beautiful president, a goddess how beautiful she was. She, embarrassed and holding her head proudly, greeted all her fans. All guests were asked to take their seats according to their tickets. The conference was declared open to loud applause, welcome the luminary of medicine. Mr. Zhang Zhongda rode out to them on a certain elevator. It was a spectacular exit. He began his story. As everyone knows, the use of targeted therapy to treat cancer has become fashionable. There are already first successes in the West. However, targeted therapy has one drawback. With its help, cancer can be prevented only in the early stages, but the result will not be ideal. Often, cancer patients are detected at intermediate stages. Therefore, it is necessary to conduct research with cancer cells, analyze the data, and begin to prevent their development. Therefore, Dr. Zhang Zhongde will have an important announcement on this matter today. The crowd of men got the feeling that this was not a conference, but that he was simply giving a lecture. But in fact, no one there understands medicine. It's more of an event. The funny thing is that all these smart guests are already drunk, but still believe that they have something in common with those who are standing on the stage. And they don't even understand that they are being brainwashed. Dr. Yang, passing by these men, heard different things. Some people thought that there was no longer any need to be afraid of contracting cancer. Someone was interested in whether the directions of research that exist at the moment are correct. Having listened to all sorts of such stories, thoughts, guesses, Ian walked and thought that there were idiots around. Dr. Zhang Zhongde announced that he has a new idea for treating cancer, and if they all want to make a breakthrough in this field, then he believes that in the near future, cancer will not be terrible. Everyone applauded him, shouting that he was a ray of hope for all humanity. President Mu did not know how much those two events would affect the corporation, but it seems that most of those present trust Mr. Zhang Zhongde. She didn't know if they could trust him, but she knew one thing for sure. Now they only had to fear Yang Feng. She had a hope that he would not appear here. At one moment, a voice shouted unflattering words about Zhang Zhongde, that he is trash, that he is chasing glory, that he is talking complete heresy. President Mu even thought for a moment that it was Dr. Yang's voice, but it was not his voice. Some man came closer to them. He recognized all his rotten ideas. He has neither shame nor conscience. He accused Dr. Zhang Zhongde of lying and said that he would trample him. It was clear from Zhongde's face that he knew this man. His eyes darted from side to side. All the guests did not know who it was, but they were wondering who had the courage to publicly insult Dr. Zhongde. President Mu knew him. It was Chu Tianxiong. Just how did he end up here? Dr. Zhang Dei said that this is a subordinate non-medic who is simply jealous of him and specifically came here to ruin everything. He laughed. He had nothing to envy. Today he is here to tell the truth. 
Dr. Jang had beaten him in the past, but what he hated most was that he made a name for himself and started collecting money from everyone. He continued to say, Doctors do not conduct life-threatening experiments, but this bastard is doing just that. Mr. E and that child who was poisoned by a mushroom are the best examples of this. People began to whisper that these cases were handled by a novice doctor, and after Dr. Zhang's treatment, they ran away without permission and did not admit it. Were they really in critical condition? Chu Tianxiang stood up in front of the audience and began calling for Dr. Yang Feng. President Mu and Dr. Zhang Zhongde were surprised. This was the only thing they were missing, not Yang Fen. Chu Tianxiang wanted to expose this deception together with Yang Feng, so if he was here, he asked him to come to the podium and confirm his words. He will protect and ensure complete safety for him. Everyone became quiet. Was the young doctor here waiting? There were only guesses in the crowd about who Yang Feng was. They decided that this was the young doctor who fixed everything. And if he really saved them, then he probably wouldn't just leave it like that. Moreover, he is a newbie, and perhaps he did not have an invitation. And this Chu Tianxiong is also a medical specialist. Chu Tianxiong was upset. Did the young doctor really not come, and he miscalculated? Meanwhile, Zhang Zhongde said that this was all bluff and slander, and this guy understands perfectly well that he will disgrace himself if he appears here. He called the security so that they would throw this charlatan out of here so that he would not fool everyone's brains. People thought that this fat man must be jealous of Dr. Zhang because he devoted so many years to healing. Zhongde wanted to drive Tianxiong away so much he wasn't so afraid of him. But he had no intention of retreating, and it didn't matter to him whether Yang Fen was here. Chu Tianxiong will not stop anything. He will lower the doctor's grief from its pedestal and will not allow such garbage to harm patients again. He wanted to organize a competition to prove his point to people. After all, all these years he has done nothing but study medicine, and he is ready to prove to everyone that there is someone in the world who is superior to him. And no one else will dare to call Zhongde the luminary of medicine, because he has no right to do so. Dr. Zhang Zhongde turned pale at his words and began to protrude from his forehead. The action still takes place on the tallest building in the city. There will be competition. Today, someone will learn the taste of defeat from them. The first task will be to set the joints, because Dr. Zhongde calls himself a chiropractor. He is ready to prove this, but how to find someone who needs to set a limb? Chu Tianxiong said not to worry. He said that he would bring it to light. The conditions of the competition were, after all, if Zhongde lost, this would serve as proof of his lies. He began to undress right in front of a crowd of people. Today, he is here for exposure. It is he who will have the bones set. And his bodyguards began to beat him. They beat him mercilessly until he bled and broke his glasses. Zhang Zhongde and the rest of the audience were shocked. They couldn't understand what was happening. President Mu and her assistant turned pale and sweated. Everyone thought Chu Tianzhong was mad, and it's good that Dr. Zhang is here. He can definitely cure him. The bodyguards invited him to do his job because it should not be difficult for him. Zhang Zhongde could not understand why Tianzhong did this. Had he really lost his mind? Looking at the injuries, he saw a dent on the skull. Having taken this blow, he could not have avoided a concussion. It didn't look like a dislocation, more like a fracture. He doesn't see the fragments and doesn't know where to start. He believed that he was crazy, and it turns out that he did not want to compete in healing at all, but committed suicide. And with this, he wanted to slander Zhongde. But it was too much to come to this. The bodyguards asked if Dr. Zhang would treat him and refused. Dr. Zhang Zhongde turned his back to the patient and looked into everyone's eyes, wondering what to do. And then a brilliant idea came to him on how to get out of this situation. He ordered to call the police because Zhang Zhongde might die. It's all his bodyguard's fault. He is certainly a doctor, but not a saint. And he doesn't know how to raise people from the dead. And these two overdid it and beat their employer to death. They can't find out and leave. The crowd wondered if he was really beaten to death. Because Dr. Zhang is a very experienced doctor, he would definitely have done it if given the chance. Therefore, they should call the police quickly. Yang Feng looked at what was happening around him. Oh, that bastard doctor, Zhang Zhongde. At the speed of light, he rushed to the patient, making his way through the crowd. He said not to involve the police yet, but to call an ambulance. We need to hurry because there is very little time left for salvation. 
Dr. Zhang Zhongde could not understand who the guy was who ran up and what he needed. Chu Tianxiong has a skull fracture and shock. First, you need to turn him on his side so that his tongue does not block his breathing. It is necessary that there are no obstructions in the respiratory tract. If there was intracranial pressure, then appropriate measures would have to be taken. And make every effort to ensure that the site of injury is not redamaged. You also need to transport the patient. Zhang Zhongde felt that this kid was trying to teach him. In this state, Chu Tianxiong will not live to arrive at the hospital. Yang Feng was shocked. Do doctors do this? Do they just stand and watch on the sidelines when they need help? Zhang Zhongde was very scared that now everyone around him would think about him. Everyone in the crowd said that usually doctors make every effort to cure patients, but this one only said that he would die and did not even try to save. President Mu and her assistant did not see who was on the stage, but they understood that a conflict was flaring up there. Yang Fen was afraid that the brain tissue was already damaged and Chu Tianxiong might die at any moment. Here he will not be able to perform an operation, he will only be able to keep him alive. First, he will restore blood flow by pressing six points. You need to maintain blood supply. Zhang Zhongde believed that if he didn't succeed, then Yang Feng even more so, because you can't be arrogant about this. Who does he think he is? If he continues, then he'll see how long he lasts. Someone from the crowd shouted that this young guy was the same Yang Fen. Everyone turned around to see who knows what this guy looks like. The surprise was even greater when it turned out that it was Mr. Wu Yang and they might know each other. But it was nonsense, he just had some materials. President Mu didn't know what to do. How come Mr. Wu and Yang Feng knew each other? Zhang Zhongde realized that this young doctor was Yang Fen. What a surprise it was to see him here. Finally, the orderlies arrived. They ran to the patient through the crowd. The pulse was stable, but the injuries were a nightmare. He needed surgery. There was still hope to save him. The doctors noticed that the young guy did a great job. Dr. Zhang Zhongde could not believe his ears and his eyes. How did he manage to save him with such injuries? This was already the third case of Yang Feng's magical rescue. Everyone believed that the first two were also true. Conference visitors wanted to return their tickets. They realized that Zhang Zhongde was a liar and he could not call himself a doctor. The only doctor here is Yang Feng. Zhang Zhongde was disgraced. All his achievements went down the drain. No one expected such a turn of events. Chu Tianxiong managed to bring him to light, even at the risk of her own life. Loud laughter came from the top of the tower, which scared everyone a little. People didn't understand why Zhang Zhongde was laughing so much. Had he gone crazy from shock? Zhang Zhong repeated the words from the crowd, a charlatan, a luminary of medicine, but they simply don't understand anything about it. Then he shouted that he was from the Ken Hu Yao clan. The guests fell silent for a minute. They thought it was true or again a lie, and what kind of clan this was. Dr. Yang Fen began to remember in his head what kind of clan this was. President Mu and her assistant were surprised that this could be the Qian Hu Yao clan. The guests did not know such a clan, but since it is Dr. Zhang Zhongde, then what kind of clan is it? After all, he is only chasing fame. Mr. Ua immediately wondered if Mu Zima had wasted so much money to promote this clan. Suddenly, the crowd said, shut your mouth. Everyone turned around to see who it was. It was two men, strangers, who were approaching the crowd of guests with a confident gait. They silently walked to Zhang Zhongde. Who are these people? They obviously know him. Zhang Zhongde recognized them and rushed to complain to Brother Yao Xin that all these people looked down on the Yao clan. He, in turn, acted unexpectedly and slapped Zhang Zhongde in the face. Zhang Zhongde was the only one who disgraced himself there. And he also said out loud that he belonged to the Yao clan. However, he is an outsider. From this point on, Zhang Zhongde is no longer part of the clan. Then they approached Dr. Yang Feng and introduced themselves. They were from the Shen Hu Yao clan, from her main branch. Yang Feng stood and did not understand what kind of clans were, what they needed from him. But the MU realized how they reigned in Zhang Zhongde. Zhang Zhongde looked at what was happening. At one moment, everything collapsed. Fame, clan, life collapsed. Because of this young doctor, Yao Xin offered to show his healing so that Yang would appreciate it. He considered himself cooler than Yang Feng and his methods amateurish. The cocktail of one of the guests began to smoke. They could not understand what was happening. 
The smoke from the cocktail went straight to Dr. Zhang Zhongde. He stood with his eyes closed as if he knew what this smoke was worth. Then he opened his eyes and looked at them. He suddenly turned pale. The conference participants did not know what these treatment methods were. It was amazing, a real art of healing. Yao Xin asked how Yang Feng could do such healing, because the healing art of the Yao clan could be compared with the healing power of the god Shenong. From time immemorial, the god Shenong was revered as a skilled healer for his achievements and divine power. Therefore, is it worth comparing the Yao clan with him? That is the question. Yang Fen should not become arrogant, much less question their abilities. The Yao clan has excellent medical skills, and such small fry should keep their mouths shut. Yao Xin turned to the young doctor, saying that he had no reason to waste his energy on trash like Yang Fen. The Yao clan has proclaimed itself the best in treatment, but we need to check who is the best among doctors. Moreover, Yao Xin has nothing to fear because Yang, in his words, is just trash. Everything happened unexpectedly for Yao Xin. The guy turned out to be not simple. He began to laugh because his Yao clan is the best in medicine. They are known all over the world. Even knowing all this Yang on the contrary is not timid and does not fawn. He wants to compete with the Chen Hu Yao clan. You just need to come up with a bet. Yang Feng asked what he wanted for his victory. Yao Xin said that the best reward for such a victory would be his life. The life of Yang Feng and the name of the Qian Hu Yao clan were at stake. But there was one condition. In a month, a tournament in the art of healing will begin, which is held by the Yao clan once every ten years. By this moment, Yang Feng must earn a million in order to take part in it. Yang Feng did not expect such a turn. Ten million is so much, where can I get it? Meanwhile, President Mu didn't know what to do with all this. Zhang Zhongde has ruined his reputation. The question is whether he should remain as chairman. Embittered, crushed, humiliated, Zhang Zhongde promised to take revenge on Yang Feng for everything. Yang Feng walked to the car thinking about 10 million. He was met there by Zhang Gu, who had been in the car all this time. They got ready to go home, and they'll figure something out with the money. He will definitely find a way to earn or borrow this money. President Mu tried to catch up with Dr. Yang before he left. Looking at her in surprise, Yang thought that she had decided to fire him after today. After all, she asked so not to darken the name of Zhang Zhongde. When I got closer to him, everything turned out to be a little different. She wanted to talk to him about a delicate issue, if he was not busy, of course. Zhang Gu even thought for a second that there was something between Yang and President Mu because he let him go home, but he himself stayed there and he was so interested in what happened there. Yang didn't know what the conversation would be about, but if she's not going to fire him, then let her lend him 10 million. President Mu stopped for a moment and said his name. Her proposal is not a joke, but completely serious. She wanted him to take over as chairman of the medical department of Longyao Corporation. After today's situation, the former chairman will no longer be able to occupy this position for obvious reasons. She also wanted him to take up secret research at the center. She wanted to give him a bunch of rights and a very good position. But Yang Feng, such a feeling could not understand her. His first thought was that the secret research of the center is the serum, A. Second, why him? Because she should hate him. After all, he ruined the name of her corporation with his fight with Zhang Zhongde. She cannot fire him since this will not restore the reputation of Lingyao Corporation. The best option for her would be to take him in with her. Moreover, she now cannot allow Zhang Zhongde to be the face of the company. Moreover, after this event, Yang Feng, as a doctor, became much more famous than Zhang Zhongde. It is best to make him chairman. Without thinking twice, Yang Feng made a decision, an unexpected turn. He refused the offer. His refusal was strange. He probably always wanted to remain a simple doctor, the simplest, ordinary doctor. Real mediocrity. But he needs these 10 million to participate in the Yao Clan tournament. Where will he get them from? Does President Mu really think he'll just lend it to him? Yang Feng did not want to become chairman of Long Yao Corporation because of his title as a medical luminary. This is shameful. And it's not for her to decide whether he spends his whole life as a simple doctor. Moreover, all their research harms people's health. 
and he does not want all this to affect him. But the most important reason for the refusal was hidden elsewhere. The concern cannot cope with shareholders, so it wants to use them as a shield. And all that they tell him here is noodles, which he is not going to buy into. And with these ten million, he will come up with something. After saying goodbye to the girls, he left. The assistant received a call to report that Tumiligorn had disappeared from the laboratory again. Blood serum, A. It was all very bad. It brought with it a lot of consequences. After telling this information to President Mu, she was shocked. How could this happen again? Dr. Yang Feng did not move far from them, and out of the corner of his ear he heard everything that the girls were talking about. About the problem they had. These lazy people didn't keep track of the serum. President Mu was heading towards them. She should be there as soon as possible. Ian also ran after her. He didn't know whether he needed to go with her, whether it could be done. But it was very interesting what happened. Perhaps he can help with something. If he sees a person in trouble, he feels the need to help him. He is a fighter for justice. And he also dragged her into his showdown with Zhang Zhongde. They were to meet in the break room with Mr. Zhao. He is a scientist, doctor of science. Then events moved to the main branch of the concern. President Mu wanted the situation to be reported to her. What happened and how it was discovered? How serious are the consequences of this? Today in the laboratory, Mr. Zhao found out that blood serum A has been stolen three times already. Three times and not once was the precedent told. This is usually reported immediately, but from above they were told that this was an order from Zhang Zhongde. The surprise of those present in the room was very strong. Zhang Zhongde said that he would inform President Mu himself. That's why they didn't tell her anything. They thought that the issue would be resolved at the management level. They could not even think that such a situation could happen. Was the blood serum, A, stolen by Zhang Zhongde? And this is confirmed by camera recordings. Were they watching the cameras, or did it not occur to them? After Mr. Zhao discovered that blood serum, A, was missing, he immediately went to check the CCTV cameras. However, several minutes were erased. Meanwhile, Zhang Zhongde was holding a conference. Yang Feng advised to just call the police and let knowledgeable people handle this matter. After all, it is their job to look for stolen goods and punish criminals. Everyone in the crowd said, no way. The police shouldn't know about this at all. No one should know about this, especially the shareholders who invested in the blood serum research. Otherwise, all the long years of incessant research will be destroyed. Yang Feng proposed without thinking. He did not think about the global nature of this problem. That unnecessary disclosure will lead to huge consequences. But since he has already witnessed this situation, he knows about what happened. To wants them to share with him details about this blood serum. Perhaps he can help, but to do this, he needs to know more than just its name. President Mu explained to Mr. Zhao who this person was with her. That he is more capable than Zhang Zhongde in the medical profession. That Yang Feng was able to cure the three whom Zhang Zhongde had left to die. Mr. Zhao had little faith in her story because the guy was still so young. But still, he gave him details. President Muscaz does not have to choose. Because the final decision is not his. Blood serum, A, is a component of blood, which is the basis of theoretical studies of human genes. It is divided into two parts. The first is the blood serum itself, and the second is a different type of blood. It is able to awaken brain cells that were not involved before. Cells begin their work. From this, a person becomes smarter and can even control regeneration and save himself from mortal wounds. However, if you transfuse a person with a different type of blood, the person will completely change down to the structure of his bones and thereby prolong his life. This can be a heavy burden for the average person. But this is only a theory for now. After all, they don't know if the blood serum can be recombined and made into a different type of blood. President Mu once heard a legend about the age-old land of her ancestors. It is located in the west of the Pamir Highlands of the Kunlun Mountain Range. In this place, Professor Zhu and his team carried out excavations and discovered an ancient burial place. What he discovered shocked him incredibly. They saw a man whose body had grown together with the coffin. He didn't even have a pulse. However, his blood ran through his veins without stopping. 
President Mu turned her attention to Yang Fong. He became visibly worried and looked at his hands. <laughs> she asked if something had happened and why he was so alarmed. He didn't have any questions yet, so he decided to leave. If they find out anything about the blood serum, what would they tell him? He will then help them. He left, slamming the door, leaving them to look for the blood serum. President Mu told Mr. Zhao, if there is something urgent, he will not be able to contact her. Find Yang Feng. Also allow him to freely visit the center and ask anything. On the way home, the young doctor wondered what this old man had done with his body. Out of the corner of his ear, he heard something flying towards him. It was a stone. With a skillful movement of one hand, the stone was sent back from where it had come. Usually, stones don't just fly around on the street. The stone hit one of the attackers. The blow fell on the head, knocking out the teeth. The force of the blow was very strong. The attacker got what he deserved. This was an unexpected turn. The bandits did not expect such a turn of events. Their third was lying on his back on the ground. What did this guy do to their friend? Why is he lying there like dead? They were worried about where they were sent and how strong this Yang Feng was. These people were three masters of rank A. It is very interesting who sent them to him. Well, if you think about it logically, it was beneficial for Zhang Zhongdei to do this. He expressed his guesses to these masters to understand if this is so. In response, they began to laugh artificially, thereby revealing that they were actually hired by Zhang Zhongdei. Yang Feng nobly crossed his path. Now, he won't leave it that easily. And this is the first call. Suddenly, the two masters began to attack Yang Feng at the same time, so that he would shut up and not say any more thoughts. But the guys significantly angered the young doctor with their actions. Now they won't be able to disperse so easily. They'll have to kneel down. All attempts to attack Yang Feng on their part were in vain. In the end, they had to kneel, just as he wanted. Yang Feng wanted to hear from them how much Zhang Zhongde paid them for attacking. They said that their task was to break a leg, and for this they would each receive 500,000. Yang Feng wondered how long their legs would stand. They begged on their knees to forgive them and have mercy. He gave a choice to the masters of rank A. Either each would give him 5 million, or they would break Zhang Zhongde's leg. After all, Yang Feng needs money now. He let them go to think to decide what they would choose. The conditions were treacherous. Who knows what will be better with these options? It was already so late, and he needed to get home. Probably the best thing to do would be to ask Zhang Gu to pick him up. But his thoughts were interrupted by a phone call from an unfamiliar number. It was Mrs. Bai who went out onto the balcony, albeit at such a late hour, and decided to call him. I called with doubts that he would pick up the phone, she was glad and grateful that at such a late time he picked up the phone. Yang Feng understood that she wouldn't have called just to ask how things were going. So something happened to her, and she will ask him for help. She will not hide and will tell it like it is. They had problems. They need to help if it doesn't bother him. Naturally, he will be well rewarded for this. He easily agreed. After all, he must thank her for the invitation card. But Miss Bai did not need thanks. She gave it to him because of a friend. Yang Feng will wait outside the hospital for the person Bai sent to him. Pisan Hospital. It was already so late, but the workers did a good job and the head physician Han was pleased. Tomorrow the head will come to their hospital to check. They cannot make mistakes. Head Dr. Han saw Yang Feng, just what he was doing near the hospital so late. His position as head physician is not yet stable, so we need to come up with something so that he doesn't come to the hospital tomorrow. If he does anything in front of the head, he will be in trouble. Yang Feng did not yet know that Han had already taken the place of the head physician of the hospital. He would play tricks on him. He didn't love him that much. Han decided to pull off a deal and do everything so that Yang would not pass away tomorrow, so he was going to talk to him. Suddenly, a beautiful Audi arrived at the hospital. It was Ou Yang Jing's car. The driver said that he came to pick up Yang Feng. Mr. Ou Yang sent him to meet him. Imagine Han's surprise. He didn't understand how this happened. Where did the young doctor get such connections and acquaintances? Yang Feng decided to take the day off from the head physician of Han for tomorrow. He has business today and needs to go. After all, he himself didn't want to. Then he would have come. 
In this regard, he will be sent on paid leave and given money in his hands. The inspection will take place at the end of the month, and this will not affect the bonus in any way. Longer events moved to Mr. Ao's hotel. Yang Feng was already there. Everyone was already waiting for him in the office. Now we will find out the details of why he was called at such a late hour and what help they need from him. Mr. Wu asked again for the last time, asked not to take it to heart and sit down quickly. Yang Feng looked at the mercenaries. They had bandaged arms and legs. Apparently, they really have some problems. And someone punished them well and was clearly stronger. Wu Yanjin lived in the Qinghai region for how many years? For better or worse, he was able to make a name for himself. However, in these few days, two masters died in Qinghai. The dead were known, and those who did this to them too. They are known, like the black and the white demon. There is no more information about them. Only the reason for their being here was known. They wanted to occupy Mr. Wu's territory, but he didn't want to share or give up his territory at all. Therefore, he sent his people after them. The strongest among them are Shuhu and Biaozi, but they are not their opponents. After that, he decided that he needed to ask someone stronger for help. They gave the order. In one night, Mr. Wu had to pack up and leave. Otherwise, he and Miss Bai would simply be killed. He was pressed against the wall, and he thought that he could turn to Yang Feng for help. After all, Yang Feng's strength and intelligence would definitely be stronger than them. If Yang Feng agrees to help him, he will never forget his kindness and will never let him down. He will do anything for him. Yang Feng, in turn, thought about these black and white demons, who they are and what they are. Where did they come from? Why do they want Mr. Wu's territory and not someone else's? Their conversation was interrupted by a group of people. They clearly knew Wu Yangjing, and they knew that he needed to leave. It was Master Hu and his apprentices. Mr. Wu was waiting for his arrival. Yang Feng knew someone, but had never seen Chief Master Hu in person. It was such an honor to meet him personally. Master Hu is an honored guest in the Zhou family in Zhonghai. If the Zhou family faces big trouble, they call Mr. Hu. He always helped and solved problems. In turn, Mr. Hu was very interested in who this red-haired guy next to them was. They tried to explain to him that there was no need to pay attention to his age, to the fact that he was so young. Neither age nor youth were an indicator of Yang Feng's strength. Mr. Hu understood perfectly well that Wu was terrified of the black and white demons. He even brought someone here from the street. He believes in everything that he has inspired in his head. Mr. Wu explained that Yang Feng is very strong. He defeated two, Shu Hu and Biaozi. At the same time, he himself remained without a single scratch. These losers faced the master and, of course, lost. Mr. Wu wanted these two to help brother Yang Feng. In turn, Master Hu can relax a little for now. Master Hu came to them today to solve the problem. Some demons are not afraid of him. He will fight them to the last, because he is not confident in the young warrior. The key to strength lies in training, not arrogance and fame. Apparently, the roof of Wu Yangjing in Zhonghai is the Zhou clan. They continue to talk about demons, about where they are now and when they will come to them. Today they will admire the moon and wait for their arrival. Then admire how Master Hu's people will deal with these small demons. Master Hu laughed at the situation and was sure that he and his people were very strong. And they will erase those two demons into ashes as soon as they appear. Yang Feng just looked at what was happening and listened, calmly drinking wine. He will look at the situation to see who is strong and who is weak, but for now just relax. Master Hu behaved like the chief among them all. He wanted Yang Feng to better stay close to him as soon as the black and white demons appeared here and try to avoid injury. Miss Bai apologized for his behavior. Master Hu is from the Zhou clan and they are Wu Yangjing's roof. That's why he behaves this way. They were all waiting for the demons. Master Hu only wanted to ask them three questions. If they answered, then everything would be fine. But if not, they will finish them off. The main thing is that everything goes as he said, then there will be nothing to worry about. Suddenly their conversation was interrupted. The black demon and the white demon stood next to them and were ready to listen carefully to all three questions. Seeing them, everyone was not shocked. Yang Feng almost choked while chewing. These were two SS rank masters. 
Were they really the black and white demon? Moreover, they were late in time, so meetings don't work. Punctuality is the key to a chance to win a fight. The black demon is the indestructible hay, and the white demon is the invincible bai. And together they are a huge force that wants to drive away Mr. Wu today. Master Hu took out his sword and began to attack them. Yang Feng continued to eat dinner at this time without paying attention. When everyone has had enough of playing and he needs to intervene, he will definitely do it. The first person Master Hu decided to deal with was the Invincible Bai. In general, their names seemed idiotic to him, which angered him even more. But everything did not go according to plan. The White Demon fought back, and it was so strong that he had to wash himself with blood. Mr. Wu and Miss Bai were already afraid of those demons, and after one dealt with the main master with ease, fear filled them. What will happen next? Is this really their last minutes of life? The demon broke the floor by throwing Master Hu, but he doesn't care about Master Wu's reaction. He's not going to apologize. After all, this place will very soon become his home and will have nothing to do with Wu. Yang Feng was eating everything at this time and did not attach any importance to what was happening nearby. It felt like he wasn't around until 7 o'clock. His calmness even infuriated the people around him. Mr. O ordered his bodyguards to shoot to kill the black and white demon, shoot regular bullets at demons. But they are not afraid of bullets. They skillfully dodge and deflect them back from themselves. Therefore, this attempt was also a failure. All the bodyguards were wounded by their own bullets, which the demons fought off. The situation was getting a bit stalemate. Mr. Wu was scared half to death. He was about to run away and wanted Miss Bai to run away with him. But she couldn't escape so easily. What about Yang Feng? Would they leave him behind? No, she couldn't do that and didn't want to. He completely forgot about Yang Feng and turned around to see what was wrong with him. And he just sat and continued to eat. Everyone was shocked by this. A man simply sits and eats during shootouts and fights, washing everything down with wine. The demons turned to Mr. Wu. They were already giving him a chance. But he himself wanted to die, so he doesn't need to blame them. Now they will administer justice. He, in turn, asked them to let him live. He would pay whatever they wanted. Just let them let him and his friend go. The white demon hit him. This won't happen. There's nothing to dream about. This won't happen. The agreement was different, and now they will fulfill it. Miss Bai rushed to the boss. She was very worried about how he was. The demon saw that the beauty was also here, did not abandon her boss, and did not run away. What a devoted assistant. She didn't give up even in such a situation. The black demon said that she was his, and he himself would personally deal with her and settle the score. The demons began to argue among themselves over Miss Bai. One looked like a devil, the second looked like a drug addict who will get it, who is more worthy. Mr. Wu told them that he and Xiao Bai were not a couple, they were nobody to each other, and asked them not to touch her. She shouldn't suffer because she chose him as her boss. They got angry and decided to finish him off. He interrupted their conversation because they were talking, and at that time he needed to be silent. Mr. Wu was almost saying goodbye to life. He understood that these could be his last minutes of life. The two walked towards Mr. Wu and Miss Bai with confidence. They, in turn, tried to take a step back with every step, thus delaying time from his death. Miss Bai, not understanding what to do, asked Yang Feng to intervene and save them. After all, today he is here for this purpose, and not to eat and drink wine. He had already eaten, looked at everyone who was doing what, drank some water, and went to help. Finally, Yang Feng will intervene in all this. The demons did not understand who Yang Feng was and how this red-haired guy could help them. They angered the young doctor by questioning his powers. Nobody can do this. Yang Feng gave the black and white demon three minutes to get out of here, otherwise we'll see how long they can hold out. The black demon could not help but react to his words. He said that he was finished, started flying at him, tried to attack, but flew away from Yang Feng with speed. The young doctor's blow was very strong. The white demon felt for Hayton. Next is the white demon's turn. It's interesting whether he will run away or not. They definitely did not expect this outcome of the situation. Yang Feng crossed the line in the opinion of the white demon, who still did not understand who he was. And how dare he even resist them? He began to attack Yang Feng, gathering all his strength into a fist. 
he was sure that he would win. But before his fist could even reach him, Yang Feng's blow had already overtaken him and he was knocked out. The next blow simply sent him to the skies. The force of the blow was simply the strongest. The white demon lost consciousness and washed himself with blood. He was defeated. The situation was such that both demons lay without strength. Mr. Wu and Miss Bai thought about how strong Yang Feng really was, and they were so grateful to him that he did not refuse to help them. Yang Feng wanted to deal with the attackers, but he was stopped and asked to wait. He was much stronger than the two of them. If he kills them today, it will not be considered a victory because they are much weaker. But our young doctor did not understand why this would be dishonest. The fight was fair, and the fact that someone is weaker and stronger is no longer their problem. They began to make excuses that yesterday they met a couple of beauties and had a great time tumbling, and this evening they were already exhausted. They had also fought before, so his victory would not be fair. Mr. Wu asked not to spare them, because these thugs would later bring a hundred with them. But Yang Feng was not at all scared by this. Some more than others. The demons also have a boss, their mentor, his name is Fendong. If Yang Feng defeats him, then they will happily die next. Yang Feng agreed to these conditions and gave them three days. In three days, they will meet in battle. Without a moment's hesitation, the demons began to quickly run away before anyone changed their mind. Master Hu stood in their way and decided to stop them from leaving. Yang Feng stopped him since he already had his own agreements with the demons. Master Hu was unconscious. The young doctor's blow simply knocked him to the ground. Mr. Wu and Miss Bai fell into despair. This was the chief master of the Zhou clan. This situation will not go away so easily. Master Hu believed that Yang Feng did not value the Zhou clan. He also dared to raise his hand against him. But Yang Feng doesn't care about the clan. He has already scheduled a fight with Fenduk, and now he cannot kill these demons. Demons are not ready to bow to Master Hu, only to Master Yang Feng. Master Hu believed that Yang Feng was taking on too much. The Zhou clan will not leave it like that. Mr. Wu was very grateful to the young doctor, how good it was that he came. After all, if it weren't for him, it's not clear how everything would have ended. He will never forget his good deed, and if Feng Dong shows up, he will contact Yang Feng. In gratitude, Mr. Ao gave a card with 60 million on it. The password for it is zero o zero. you can use it for your health. He took the card and joyfully said goodbye at seven and left. Mr. Wu was glad it was all over. But he was alarmed again by something new. He was worried about whether something good would happen after Yang Feng hit Master Hu. This is like slapping the Zhou clan in the face. Miss Bai laughed. She captivated Mr. Wu that he was worried about the skirmish between Mr. Yang and the Zhou clan. But she believed that there was nothing to worry about. It was all just excitement. You should always follow the strong. These years, they worked for the Zhou clan and at least earned more than 10 billion, but they received only a few 100 million. The black and white demon came to the lair of their boss. When they got closer to their feet, they saw that something was happening there. It was like trying to get to the next level. They wanted a promotion from the boss. They wanted to quickly reach the average level. The energy that came out of the cave was very strong, and its strength grew every minute. It was becoming more and more difficult to stay on her feet. She simply walked around like a whirlwind. The demons couldn't believe their eyes. Would their boss really succeed this time? Slowly, the strength of these energy waves began to decrease, and grins were heard in the caves. Finally, Fang left her, and yes, he managed to achieve a promotion. Now he is a mid-level master. The boss asked his subordinates whether they had completed the task that he assigned them. They were unable to carry out the assignment and failed. They were ashamed, but their strength turned out to be less than that of the enemy. He was incredibly surprised how the two of them could not cope with one Ouyang Jing. Has he really become that strong in these few days? The demons thought that everything would go smoothly, but Yang Feng was there. Bai and Hayton were unable to do anything. He is so strong that he proved to be too tough. Their boss said that he would make Yang Fen regret this. If he intervened in this situation, there would be no mercy. When Yang Feng approached the house, he noticed that the light was on in Mai Quan's apartment. Joyfully and quickly went up to the floor and decided to go see her. Maybe Mai wants to spend her wedding night with him. He inserted the key into the lock and began to turn it to get into the apartment. 
having fun, definitely not expecting to see the next picture. Opening the door, he saw a man who was inside. After occupying the bed and drinking there, this man waited for Yang Feng to return. He felt at home there. This situation made Yang Feng very angry. He wanted the old man to get out of there. But I wasn't going to do this. They hadn't seen each other for so long. Yang Feng should actually be crying with joy at seeing him. He was not going to rejoice. He actually thought that the old man had died long ago. It would have brought him more joy to drink for three days and three nights at a banquet. This old man borrowed some pennies from Yang Feng. The situation was serious, but the imprint it left was still there. Yang Feng was furious. For him, these were not pennies. He had been saving them for many years. I put them aside from jobs, part-time jobs, but he just took them and didn't ask, much less even apologize. The old man suggested calming down and having a drink. The young doctor was very arrogant. Maybe at least alcohol will take some of this resentment and arrogance away from him. He even decided to compete with the Qianhu Yao clan, as if he was tired of living. But in reality, he simply cannot tolerate these assholes, who for some reason decided that they were the best healers, who gave them the right to rise above others. But this particular old man has golden hands. His ancient techniques are many times superior to modern methods of medicine, but he, for example, does not consider himself a luminary of medicine. So why do they call themselves and think like that? The old man believed that the boy Yang Feng likes to meddle in other people's affairs. The Chen Huyao clan uses medicine as a weapon. And he still doesn't know how strong this clan is. The clan's strength is much greater than what it might seem at first. Even in the third generation, they have a genius named Yao Shao Huang. In ancient times, the most powerful healing agent was a panacea. And they were the family that could make it. I wonder how long it will take Yang Feng to create one pill from it. These are very complex process and are not accessible to everyone. Even if you give him the best furnace to make an immortality pill, will he be able to cook at least one simple pill in half an hour? Yang Feng is strong, but he still has a lot to learn. And of course, he understood this very well. If he gains experience, he will certainly be useful. For example, the old man doesn't even need this stove, and he spends only 10 seconds on making it. There are at least three people in the Yao clan with the same skills. Therefore, they are not so simple, and in addition, there are various other specialists. Although these three are inferior to him in speed, they will definitely be able to defeat Yang Feng. He needs to improve his skills. The old man told Yang Feng to prepare an excellent pill if he valued his life. Opening the window, he flew away. Yang Feng asked where he was going. After all, last time he also disappeared without explaining where. The world is so big its master wants to see it. He ordered Yang Feng that if he lost to the Yao clan, he would not tell anyone that he was Huo Yanlo's disciple, that this shame did not fall on his shoulders. He himself moved further and further away from Yang Feng's window, floating in the air. This is a great ability to move in the air. He took with him the card that Mr. Wu gave to Yang Feng. It turns out that Yang Feng's money again ended up in the hands of his master. The next morning at the Pingan Hospital, Dr. Mai and Chief Physician Han showed everything to the boss. The only thing that Dr. Mai did with them, why did Han Shiwei call her if he was sucking up to the leader all the time? And at the same time, she felt completely unnecessary at this meeting. Walking down the hall, Chief Physician Han looked from the window and was shocked. Outside the window at the entrance to the hospital was Yang Feng. But why is he here? He had a bad feeling because he took the day off. And it shouldn't be here at all. Like some kind of punishment, it also came at the moment when the head was here. Therefore, he decided to give the task to Quan. She must under no circumstances allow Yang Feng to enter here. Why, this doesn't concern her. And if she does not, he will not give his consent to the payment of funds for the research. Therefore, he left her to carry out the assignment, and he and his boss Liu went on. Yang Feng walked with a thought in his head. The old man will drive him to his grave. Now he has no money for competitions. He emptied his pockets as usual. Then his thoughts were interrupted by Dr. Mai, who came to meet him. She was very kind and did not behave as usual. She offered to go out to lunch together if he was hungry. 
This was too suspicious, because Dr. Mai had never behaved like this before. On the contrary, she tried to escape from him. Now she was somehow too worried, and how specifically she wanted to take him away. Therefore, he immediately wanted to go to the front and see what was happening there, and no Dr. Mai will stop him. Walking around the corner of the hall, he came across Chief Liu and Chief Han, who were heading forward. So that was the problem. Now everything fell into place. Chief Han's emotions were simply overwhelming. His anger had no place inside him. He was confident that Dr. Mai would be able to detain him, and he is standing here, right in front of them. Dr. Yang greeted them, but did not understand what was happening there. How interested he was. Chief Dr. Han explained to Chief Liu that this young man was a hospital employee. Head Liu was indignant. During working hours, employees must wear work uniforms. But this feeling has not heard about it. He wanted to know his name, position, and see his pass. As a matter of principle, Dr. Yang was not going to say or show anything and let anyone try to force him. Deputy Chief Physician Han fainted after the words of Chief Liu. He wanted to reconsider his assessment of him. If the attitude of his employees towards their superiors is so disgusting, then how will he treat his patients? He disciplines his employees terribly, and this one is the worst. Meanwhile, events at Mr. Wu's hotel. Master Hu came to see him and was greeted coldly by Wu Yang Jing. Master Hu got hurt trying to help Wu Yang Jing with those demons, but Yang Feng did everything for him. He demanded an explanation as to why this guy intervened and did the job for him. But what to explain? He was sent by the Zhou clan, and besides, he paid him 50 million. He shouldn't have a question. That's just how he received the money. As it turned out, it wasn't enough for him. He wanted 500 million and his young lady, Miss Bai. It seems Master Hu has gone too far and has crossed all boundaries of what is permitted in his demands and statements. He didn't think so. He thought that Miss Bai herself wanted to become his. But that won't work. Miss Bai is Mr. Wu's agent. She runs most of his business. Without her help, he would no longer be able to pay the Joe clan. Master Hu attacked Mr. Wu. He considered him a piece of shit and didn't want to listen at all. He just wanted everything to be his way. Having tied Miss Bai's hands and taken her away, her boss could not stop them. His strength was small. He could not stand up for the girl. Mr. Wu's bodyguards were worried about his health and wanted to take him to the hospital. But he had a different plan. For this, he needed a phone. We return to the Pinzan Hospital, because there are events there at this time. Dr. Mai will not receive money for research through Yang Feng. But if she rushes to him while he's fainting and saves him, he might change his mind. Yang Feng mocked. Their conversation was interrupted by a telephone call. It was Wu Yang Jing who called Yang Feng. When he picked up the phone, he obviously understood that something had happened to him. But everything was just terrible. He was scared. Master Hu kidnapped Xiao Bai. He couldn't do it without Yang Feng's help. Yang Feng had to leave the clinic and go to the hotel to see Mr. Wu. Here he wanted to hear the details of what was happening in order to understand what happened here. So far, these events had not entered his mind. He learned that Master Hu was very upset because of those events, so he demanded 500 million from him. But Master Wu does not have that kind of money, and he took Xiao Bai. Yang Feng could not understand. Mr. Wu is a member of the Zhou clan. Then why doesn't he ask them for help? After all, this is the fastest way to solve problems. But as it turned out, for the Zhou clan, both Miss Bai and Mr. Wu are just pawns. No one would go against Master Hu for her sake. After all, he is not just a member of the clan, but the main master. What kind of clan is this? How much power do they have? If Mr. Oh Yang Jing himself considers himself an empty place. There are still so many hidden things about this clan. What remains to be learned about them? Yang Feng, after listening to everything, said to leave it to him. He'll figure something out about it. He himself rushed to call Mr. Ye for an urgent conversation. He explained that his girlfriend was kidnapped by Master Hu, and he wants to ask him to track their location, and as soon as possible. Naturally, he could not refuse him. The information will be ready in three minutes. Yang Feng was very grateful to him, and if he needs help in the future, he can turn to him at any time. He always remembers the people who helped him. He had information about his location. The phone call was over. The question remained where the Jinhe residence is located. 
Perhaps Mr. Wu will help with this. After all, he is one of those people, but as soon as he heard this name, he began to tremble and suddenly turned pale. The Jinhe residence is the place where the Zhou clan settled. Yang Feng read from his behavior that Mr. Wu was afraid and had no intention of going there. Mr. Wu was dripping with sweat from excitement. He won't be able to go against the Zhou clan. Then Yang Feng asked his driver Zhang Wu if he knew where this residence was located. He knew the location of the residence and the road to it as well. Yang Feng and Zhang Gu set off to rescue Miss Bai. At this time, Miss Bai was tied up and locked in the room. She didn't know what to do. Will Boss Wu come to save her? She was worried and very afraid. It's not a fact that the boss will fight the Joe clan for her sake. Yes, if you think well, then who would? Then hope arose in her head that Mr. Yang could save her. But should she hope for it? Why would Mr. Yang do this for her sake, go against the Joe clan? At this time, Master Hu was leading Mr. Zhou to Miss Bai. She was a gift that was waiting for Mr. Zhou in the room. He wished Mr. Zhou to have fun with the gift tonight. The door opened. Mr. Zhou stood on the threshold. Miss Bai was devastated to see him. The son of the Zhou family slammed the door behind him, leaving Master Hu behind that door. He waited so long to meet her. Being Wu Yangjing's agent is a waste of time. His desire was that she should be his. He will provide for her much better. She will become higher than Wu Yangjing himself. Miss Bei asked him to let him go. She would not be able to be with him. But he didn't want to be with her. She thinks a lot about herself. He just wanted to play with her. As long as Wu Yangjing was useful to them, Mr. Zhou did not want to interfere. But how much joy he had, Master Hu was able to find an excuse to take it away. He looked at her like a cat at a sausage. I asked her to be a good girl and not resist. I, Master Hu, meanwhile, leaned his ear to the door. He was very interested in what was happening there behind the door. Turning back, Master Hu saw Yang Feng. This boy is truly lucky. Yang Feng accelerated and prepared a blow for him. The blow was so strong that Master Hu managed to knock down the closed door. Mr. Zhou could not understand who it was and what was happening. In front of him stood an arrogant young guy and another with a bat in his hands. Meanwhile, Yang Feng was also interested in who was in front of him, whether it was really young Master Zhou. Zhang Gu shouted, who dared to touch his crazy brother's girlfriend, for which he will receive a slap on the head from Yang Feng, because he does not know how to follow his words. Miss Bai didn't even hope that Yang Feng would come to save her. Mr. Zhou, hearing his name, wondered if he even knew where he was and what the consequences would be. Yang Feng did not want to listen to him. He had three seconds. If life is dear to him, then he must fall to his knees and beg for mercy. Mr. Zhou impudently and Greyhound said, or what? For this, he received a knockout. Yang Feng wanted to hear what he meant by mistletoe. Words, or... Master Hu asked Yang Feng to stop. This was already enough. He had already hit the young master. Everyone understood that Yang Feng is strong, but before the power of the Zhou clan, he is simply nothing. This did not stop Yang Feng. They dared to drown Miss Bai. Now their deaths will be painful. The young gentleman, sitting on the floor, whined that he hit him. He threatened that now his father would come here to them, and then he would make him regret it. Yang Feng allowed Jiang to hit Mr. Zhou well. Jango even froze for a second at such words and sentences. But in the end, he was not at a loss and took the crowbar and swung at him. He tried to stop him, giving arguments and intimidating. If Zhang Wu hits the young master of the Zhou clan, he will order his entire family to be slaughtered. This did not stop Zhang Gu. He hit this piece of dermis. He himself angered his brother and even decided to pretend to be an idiot. Miss Bai was fine, but Zhang Wu continued to beat the young master. Suddenly, someone appeared at the door. Miss Bai and Mr. Yang turned around to see who had come to them. It was the head of the Zhou clan, surrounded by his bodyguards. Miss Bai recognized him. The head of the clan saw Yang Feng and could not understand how his son could cross his path. The young doctor did not care who came or what would happen. He was not interested in Miss Bai. She was not at all afraid. After all, she didn't do anything to them. Why should she be afraid of them? Besides, from now on, she wants to be with him. With her words, she even made the young doctor blush. Master Hu sat and laughed. Now the head of the Zhou clan is with them, and what will Yang Feng do to them now? He should remember this day because today he will die. Miss Bai said that she will now be with Yang Feng, 
and he cannot pester her. Even though he is younger, this does not mean that he will not do anything to him. Master Hu believed that Yang Fien had gone crazy. Didn't he notice the arrival of the head of Zhou? He told him so. That the masters of the Zhou clan are the best in their field, among them there are several first-class mentors. The head of the Zhou clan was in such a hurry that he did not take his best masters with him. But he hoped that Yang Feng, out of respect for him, would not touch him. Master Hu received a lot of money for his words, and unconsciously lay on the floor at Yang Feng's feet, unconscious. The younger gentleman could not understand what was happening. This guy dared to hit Master Hu, looked down on his father. He asked his father to kill him immediately, because he did not value him at all. But his father simply closed his mouth. It was all a mistake by the head of the Zhou clan. He did not pay enough attention to his upbringing. He asked to let his son go. If Ian lets him go, he will pay him any money. The son could not understand Yang Feng hit him, and the father did not want to stand up for him. Is it possible that all the masters in the Zhou clan have transferred out? Why did the head give birth to such an idiot? Even though Yang Feng is a high-class master, he still won't be able to defeat the entire clan. However, the clan is unable to oppose anything to him. He asked Yang Feng for leniency to forgive his child. If he allows him to live, the clan head gives him his word that the Zhou clan will treat him as an honored guest. The younger head of the clan asked his father not to do this, but to simply deal with him with the help of the masters. The father looked at his son so angrily, he clearly made it clear to him that it was time to shut his mouth and just stand aside. Yang Feng, of course, agreed to the clan head's request. However, if Zhou Jr. starts being rude to him again, he will be very angry and will not let it go so easily. The head of the Zhou clan exhaled. If everything is as Mr. Yang said, then tomorrow he will call his masters here. Finally, Yang Feng decided to teach the younger gentleman a lesson. Gave him several blows and fractures. The junior head of the clan asked his father to kill Yang Feng and slaughter his entire family. The father simply watched what was happening silently. This is what happens to those who go against Yang Feng. He did as the head of the clan wanted, spared his son, did not kill. He was happy with everything. He was glad that Yang Feng stuck to his word. Miss Bai was next to Yang Feng. He took her away and cleared her honor. His friend Zhong Dei thought he was so cool, so strong. Wu Yang Jin is nothing compared to him. We moved to the domain of Mr. O. Oh. Miss Bai sat quietly and thoughtfully in the room. Yang Feng came to her to find out how she was feeling. Approaching her, I saw her sweet smile. I wonder why she was smiling. She smiled because he cared so much about her. By this, she embarrassed him greatly. He knows what to do with mercenaries, but not with embarrassment. Miss Bai wants to call him Fenge. This is an option for a girl to contact a guy as they become close. She thanked him for saving her. But there is no need to worry about her. Over how many years she has faced various difficulties, she is not that weak. She was born in the Taishan Mountains. Everyone calls her a femme fatale, and these are not empty words. Yang Feng thinks she is a very beautiful girl. After graduating from university, she changed many jobs due to the unspoken rules of her bosses. At the time, her father was addicted to gambling and owed tens of millions. Yang Feng had one thing in her mind. She has a worthless father, and he has an equally worthless mentor. Her father had no money to pay, and as a result, he sold her. When she found out about this, she tried to run away. However, those people were very influential. They sent dozens of people to search for her and eventually caught her. She wanted to commit suicide, but Yang Jin appeared. Perhaps he found her attractive enough and therefore saved her. Those people knew Wu Yang Jin, so they did not go against him. In the beginning, Wu Yang Jin also wanted to make her his, but then she was able to earn him several ten million and he abandoned her. That is, because he found it useful. But if she weren't like that, if he didn't like her, she would probably die. Stealing a glance at Yang Feng, Miss Bai wanted to ask for something. She would like to stay by his side after he saved her today and officially bid farewell to Wu Yang Jing. When everything comes to an end, she will return the topic to all things. With the capabilities of Feng, you can move mountains. If he agrees, she could help him, but they will discuss this later. If this day ever comes, Miss Bai will definitely open her own business.
the head of the clan brought his son to the hospital. Doctors said that the injuries were serious and would not be easy to cure. It would take three to five years. Most of all, the young master will subsequently walk with a cane. The younger gentleman did not want to be disabled and will take revenge. He will kill his entire family, slaughter all his friends and relatives. Carter needs to calm down now and focus on getting better and then everything else. The father promised his son to avenge him, so you need to rely on him. Mr. Wu witnessed part of the conversation. The head of the Zhao clan wanted to immediately know what kind of relationship Wu Yanjin had with Yang Feng. He said that there was nothing connecting them. He is loyal to the Zhou clan with all his heart. He would never betray them. But they don't ask him about this. He wants to clarify with him that Yang Feng is the one who arranged a meeting with Feng Dong, the boss of those. Demons. And it is said about him that he will expel the Zhou clan from Jinghai. This year their opponents are nothing but rabble. Their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of Mr. Lan. The master called him and he came on his orders. We need to deal with Feng Dong. Wu Yanjin will take Mr. Lan to him. As for Yang Feng, he will figure out what to do. They will fulfill everything and go to the task of the head. Feng Dong is so impudent that as soon as he appeared here, he immediately found Mr. Wu, forced him to tell the head to get out of Jinghai and kicked him out of his own house. Now all hope lies with Mr. Lan. Pushing off from the ground, Mr. Lan rose hundreds of meters up. Although the mercenaries push themselves, the maximum they can do is jump two to three meters in height. But this is not surprising. Master Hu himself is a student of Mr. Lan. On top of the stone statue, Mr. Lan stood as the main and most powerful master. Today he declares war on Mr. Fend. If he can defeat him, the Zhou clan will leave Jinghai. But for some reason, Mr. Fende was silent. Was he really afraid of him? Feng Dong did not dare to go out to Grand Master Lan. Suddenly, Feng Dong appeared, mocking the names of the masters. He had the feeling that the clan was collecting a zoo. Everyone who came with Master Lan was frightened by his approach, and there have already been casualties. Was this really the nominal master of the Zhou clan? He couldn't even withstand one blow. Mr. Feng Dong, this hour will spare them, but tomorrow they must bring absolutely everyone here to Jinghai. He will rule over it and force them all to leave his territory. And Yang Feng will publicly force himself to obey. He will begin to beg for the forgiveness of his demons. The black and white demon were already eager to take revenge on him. Feng Dong drove everyone away, and tomorrow he will finish off Yang Feng, Ping Gang Hospital. Mr. O ran to Yang Feng for help. Feng Dong came for him. The white and black demons are his subordinates. He kicked Mr. Wu out of his house and took away his territory. And he said to come to the lake on the outskirts of Jinghai. But this does not concern Yang Feng. If Mr. Ao can still fight, he will win back his district. But if not, then he just needs to give it up. Mr. Wu recalled that Yang Feng promised him to stop Feng Dong, and now he wants to take back his words. Yang Feng made a promise to Miss Bai from the very beginning, but now she is no longer his agent. Entering the office, he saw that there was only one doctor in place. Han Shiwei was promoted to chief physician, so everyone left to listen to his fiery speech. Dr. Mei came out stretching from her sleep. She was tired. Now they should all be back. Dr. Mai, last night, the guy kept me up until the morning. She is not dating Dr. Yang Feng. He is like a little brother to her. Miss Bai suddenly appeared in the office and came to see Yang Feng. But why? They didn't agree to meet here. Here, she did not want to say the reason for coming, so they had better leave. On a stone hill early in the morning, Fang gathered with his black and white demons. They stood and waited there at Yang Feng. Was there really any point in this since yesterday he never showed up? But there was work there even without him. You can be calm. Just by looking down, all these people were in full combat readiness. Master Hu came up to the hall. This was not a problem for him because he had the powers of the main master. He was already near Fang, showing him his fighting stance and his intentions to fight. They had no idea why exactly Hu came. Was Yang Feng really scared and the demons managed to drive him away? But this angered him. Why all the comparisons to Yang Feng when there are many other worthy masters in Jinghai City. The gentleman did not want to listen to nonsense from the lips of Master Hu. It would be better if he quickly began to attack. This is not a place where he can do whatever he pleases. Enough chatting. We need to solve the problem for which they have gathered. 
There will be no mercy for Master Hu from the Master, and there is no need to blame him later if he suffers seriously. But he did not doubt his abilities. He arrogantly thought that he could win. Therefore, I decided to reflect the blow on him. The attempt did not end well. He was stopped. A special piercing force was applied to it, which did not even involve the use of hands. Master Hu's eyes became like broken glass. He was unconscious. The gentleman defeated him with one blow, and he threw him down the hill to the people who came with him. The masters did not expect such an outcome. Is this really the end of everything? Fedun became the head of the hill. Now he will control their lives. From this day on, he becomes the owner of the Jinghai district and his first order will be to hand over the entire territory to him. They will then share the profits from their business with him, which is located in Jinghai. People thought this was nonsense. They could not understand why they should give him the area in which they had been doing business for so many years. Their disobedience made Mr. Feng Dong very angry. How dare they contradict him and disobey orders? With one wave of his hand, this monster killed a man at a distance of several tens of meters. How great is his strength? It is not clear whether there is a clan in which the masters could resist him. They better hurry up with their decision. There is not much choice. Either they will voluntarily hand over the territory, or they need to prepare for battle. Back at Pinzan Hospital, Dr. Yang went out onto the balcony with Miss Bai. Her visit was because she wanted Yang Feng to help Oh Yang Jing. Although she decided to leave him, he always treated her well. That's why she wanted to help him in difficult times. This is the only way they will be even and put an end to it. The young doctor understood why she came to ask him. She valued this friendship highly, which is why she came to him for help. And of course, Yang Feng will help her and will not refuse. Miss Bai's gratitude knew no bounds. She will never forget that he saved her then and now he is saving the boss. He is very kind. Meanwhile, at the rock, more and more victims became. Feng Dong is incredibly strong. He killed an entire crowd with one blow. More and more people flocked to them. But even with this number, they still could not defeat him. Whoever still disagreed with Feng Dong, he was ready to fight them again. Wu Yang Jing and the mercenaries did not understand what would happen next. No one else could go against this monster. As disappointed and depressed as he was, he was even afraid that Mr. Yang would be powerless there. President Mu considered this Feng Dong to be very strong. An excellent example of a true master. Mr. Zhang Gu also thought he was cool. But Brother Yang Feng could not be compared. He knew that for sure. Everyone lost, and therefore they will still have to immediately give him the territories. However, today he came not only to take the place of the head of the Jinghai district, he also wants to challenge one of them. Everyone was alarmed. Is there really someone in Jinghai who could force Feng Dong to do this? You won't be too surprised who that mysterious man was? This is Yang Feng. What was the surprise of the people? They did not understand what Mr. Yang had to do with it. But Feng Dong wanted to fight with him. He had nowhere to retreat. It seems that in all of Jinghai, the one who most resembles a master is Yang Feng. This will be his ticket to power. After all, only by destroying him can he finally be considered the head of the Jinghai region. Here comes Mr. Yang. He was very amused. Mr. Feng Dong thought that he could compare with him. Everyone couldn't believe their eyes. He really came and could protect them. Feng Dong, looking from the top of the hill, saw the same Yang Feng who beat the black and white demons. He looked at him from the foot of the hill with such eyes all the anger and hatred could be read in just one glance. People who did not personally know Mr. Yang doubted his strength. He doesn't look like an opponent at all, and most of all he takes on too much of himself. Wu Yang Jing's plan was to try to escape with his mercenaries while Lord Yang distracted Feng Dong. Everything should work out for them. They briefly began to try to implement the plan, and almost everything has already worked out. Taking a final look, Mr. Wu saw a strange thing. The guy moved in the air, but how is this possible? Who is he really? Yang Feng was cheerful in the air above the hill. It was very surprising. Nobody expected such a turn. This even managed to interest Mr. Feng Dong. This point in his biography was very interesting. Black and white demons stood watching what was happening. Not a simple guy, as he seemed from the very beginning. Did not react in any way to the forces of the head. He's much cooler than they imagined. But even knowing and seeing his powers, they believe in the head. 
After all, the more strong opponents he meets, the stronger his determination to fight will become. If the head of Feng Dong loses, he will bow to him and will never take revenge. But Yang Feng did not consider the option of losing at all. It was very arrogant of him, and now he needs to defend himself. Feng Dong was the first to strike. Yang Feng was able to dodge the blow. It was too simple and easy a blow. Yang Feng began to strike next. Spinning in the air, he kicked him. The demons saw their head who fell to the ground. They were worried about how this battle would end. People were in shock as much as possible. With one kick, he managed to put the enemy on the shoulder blades. Feng Dong was fine, but he understood one thing for sure. He shouldn't have assessed the enemy enough. He was in a militant mood to prove his strength and not to compromise. Yang Feng was strong, while Fenden thought completely differently, he was no match for the head of the demons. Feng Dong began to envelop him with his powers. It was like a whirlpool of energy around him. No one understood what kind of action this was. One thing was clear. Feng Dong began to fight in earnest. It felt like there was an earth tremor. Yang Feng is very fast, but he doesn't have enough strength. Only luck will help him dodge the attack. And so, it's time to try the kick. Feng Dong sent a powerful stream of energy. This powerful blow was already approaching Dr. Yang. Meanwhile, Yang Feng beat him. While he was preparing to strike, the fast Yang Feng had already moved behind him. He managed to evade his blows only due to his speed. And then we finally managed to catch him. It was a strong blow, one might even say a powerful one. The ground even shook under Fang's feet and cracks appeared. He was immensely glad that he was caught, even though I spent a lot of effort trying to escape from him. Oh no, everything turned out to be completely wrong. He barely even touched his cheek. It didn't even bother him at all. Yang Feng did not have to wait for a retaliatory strike. Gathering his strength into a fist, he began to strike checkmate. The speed of the fist approaching Fong was such that at first his hair even shook in the wind. Yang Feng stopped his fist right in front of his face. He hoped that the demon boss understood the essence of the difficulties that awaited him if he went to fight him. Fang, in turn, understood everything and agreed to any conditions. Feng Dong had no idea that there was such a peerless master like Yang Feng in Jinghai. He fully admitted his defeat. From now on, he will worship him as a god. He swore that he would never try to settle scores with him. People could not believe their eyes and ears. He really won. He is the strongest. They began to cry out his name. Proud that they have such a strong master, Yang Feng definitely didn't expect this. His name is now on the lips of hundreds. Popularity and fame became great. In the car, the head of the clan was watching what was happening. This situation did not entirely please him. People simply could not calm down. They did not stop pronouncing his name and honoring him. Zhang Dei was so proud of his brother, he is so handsome. Unexpectedly for everyone, Yang Feng fell. What happened there? Everything was good and clear. He felt bad. His strength seemed to be leaving him. The body seemed to be blocking movement. If you think about it, it was Feng Dong, the little soul who poisoned him with something. But he himself did not know what had happened. His surprise was no less than Yang Feng's. The crowd under the hill did not believe that he was capable of poisoning. Now all the clashes between the masters are becoming very dangerous. The head of the clan and his son also came here. He cannot let Yang Feng get away with it by beating the young master. Now he will pay for what he did. The poisoning was good for him. Today he will end it. After all, he is filled with hatred. Feng Dong is also on the list of those who need to be killed. Anyone who has ever considered going against the Zhou clan deserves to die. Today the head of the clan did not come alone. He took with him five middle-ranking fighters, which will carry out his instructions right now. They will deal with Yang Feng first. Without hesitation, they immediately set off to climb the hill, one after the other. Bai Gi and Hei Tan will ensure the safety of Mr. Yang Feng no matter what. They will do everything carefully so as not to damage their reputation. Having climbed the hill, the soldiers began to attack without wasting time. Mr. Feng Dong ran to help, running closer. Even for a second, he thought that he didn't have time. But looking closely, it was clear that the attacker got what he deserved for coming closer. Just how this happened became a mystery to everyone. But then everything became clear. Yang Feng deliberately fooled the head of Zhou. What shock! Fear, horror was in the eyes of the head. 
His plan failed. Everything collapsed in his head. The younger head looked at everything and hoped that the fighters would cope. Besides that one, there were four more left. And with their strength together, they will definitely be able to break his leg. But the head of the clan changed his mind. I decided to call my fighters back. The son even thought that his father was afraid. Each master that the head brought is comparable in strength to Feng Dong. This means it is clear what fate awaits them. But the junior leader was confident that Yang Feng was not capable of defeating the four Feng Dong. Imagine his surprise when everything began to go not according to his plan, and not at all as he could have imagined. Yang Feng, who had already dealt with all the masters of Junior Zhou, sat with his feet hanging off the cliff. Therefore, he will not be able to be beaten and sit in a wheelchair. The head of the clan and his son don't know what to do next. They have no more masters left. Unfortunately, he will never compare to Yang Feng. He is strong, and it is not clear where his strength comes from. President Mu looked at these fights with admiration and surprise. After all, he was not only a hero, but also her doctor from the Longyao Corporation. Wu Yangjin and his masters stood nearby, as if they were just beginning to realize how strong this Mr. Yang was. Where did all this courage come from for Wu Yangjing? He dared to collude with the Zhou clan and wanted to destroy Lord Yang Feng. What kind of excuses did not sound from the lips of Mr. Wu? He wouldn't exactly plot something behind his back, because he's very afraid of him. The merits of Wu Yangjing are that Yang Feng did not come here. He came to his aid only at Miss Bai's request, and he set him up. He has two options. Either he and his men bring the head of Zhou to him, or he will kill him right here. He no longer needs to anger Mr. Yang, otherwise, after they kidnap the head, the Zhou clan will hunt them. And if they are not killed, then all ties with them will be severed. They won't be able to defend against all of them. If everything ends the way they think, then they will all be finished. Everyone supported Shou Hu. After everything that happened, they will follow Mr. Yang. Having made a common decision, Wu Yangjing and the guys went to overthrow the head of Zhou and the young master. Who knew that he was a traitor? ready at any second to choose the side of his enemies. They needed to end him even then, but they never decided to do so at the time. Wu Yangjing had a great grudge against the clan. He served the clan for many years and did not receive any reward. He and his people decided to get rid of them, capture the head of Zhou and his son. On command, they headed towards them to kill. Suddenly their path was blocked by a fighter. He stood in defense of the head, if these small fry decided to play with him, he was ready to take their lives. Having completed the technique of gathering and attracting force, he only had to hit the ground with his fist. How the soldiers standing nearby were thrown out of his way. Naturally, the head of the Zhou clan brought other fighters with him. And everyone who went against their clan, every single one, will be punished. Killed. The fighters decided to split up. Three of them would go to stop Yang Feng, and one would defend the head and his son here. But it will be difficult to protect. Those who remain are no match for Yang Feng. Therefore, the leader better get ready and run away. Yang Feng stood with his hands in his pockets, not at all worried about sending three masters to him. Fang really wanted to help his brother Yang, so he offered to help him. But he did not need help. He managed to take down all three with one right hand. They will continue to collect themselves piece by piece for a long time. Seeing this, the bodyguards decided to quickly take away the head of the clan. They drove the car. Yang Feng would not be able to keep up with them. We need to quickly get the young gentleman into the car. Before I could finish speaking, these same bodyguards flew into the car from Yang Feng's hands. The head of the clan was shocked how this was possible, who he even was. A second later, Yang Feng was standing proudly on the car in which they wanted to escape. He also did not waste a moment to make fun of them, offering to help lift the youngest into the car. The clan head fell to his knees. This was the last straw of fear of Yang Feng. He swore that he would never attack him again. He begged to be released with his son. Mr. Wu mocked him. Just look at him. At first he acted much more arrogant. He suggested that Yang Feng not listen to anything, but deal with them quickly. Yang Feng had a completely different opinion on this matter. He let everyone go and gave them freedom. Although no one expected this. It was a shocking decision. How could such a thing be said? After all, the head of Zhou wanted to kill him, but he lets him go. Yang Feng actually made the decision to let them go. 
He doesn't want to get his hands dirty. After all, even if you let them go, they still won't pose a danger to him. Only the strongest do this. The Joe clan can gather all its forces against him to take revenge and resist. But this did not frighten him. Only the strongest do this. And the Jinghai region should be under the control of just such a person. The crowd that obeyed the clan wanted Lord Yang to rule in Jinghai. After all, they believe that under the leadership of Mr. Yang, their area will prosper. What a shame it was for the head of the Zhou clan. Before, he would have repaid him a hundredfold. Even with the support of the people and all the capabilities to rule the area, Yang Feng did not want to do it. Ao Yang Jing understood everything. There's nothing wrong with him not wanting to. But maybe for the sake of money, he would think again. If he becomes the boss, he will control all the local business, of which there is quite a lot. His assets will reach 100 million. He will be able to do whatever he wants. He will live without denying himself anything. In addition, he will have his own personal transport. This helicopter, for example. Wherever he goes, he will be greeted by the applause of cute girls. There will be only beauties around. We'll be able to do charity work around the world. High-rise buildings and even schools will be named after him. Yang Feng was interested and even bribed. This is the life of a real man. Damn, Wu Yang Jing. It's immediately clear that he was once involved in network marketing. These speeches inflamed everyone. But will Yang Feng believe it? This, in turn, lured him madly. How much will he have by agreeing? And he agreed, giving Wu Yang Jing a month to prepare. If everything suits him, he will be the one to rule his next territories. Wu Yang Jing is very happy, no need to worry, he won't let you down. Yang Feng finally became the boss of the Jinghai region, while Wu Yang Jing became his subordinate. Now Yang Feng has become even more interesting to President Mu and her corporation. She was very worried about the future. What will such changes lead to? The best option for her would be to keep her distance for now. Meanwhile, at the Pinzan Hospital, Dr. Mai sat sad and thoughtful in her office. Was she wondering where Dr. Yang was, and that was why she was so confused? Yang Feng scared her to death by coming in unexpectedly and from behind. Seeing him, Dr. Mai began to cry. He could not understand what had finally happened to her. But then quietly, through her tears, she whispered that it was all Han Xu Wei. Naturally, the first thing to do was guess that she had exposed him to something for which he received a well-deserved slap in the face. Suddenly, Dr. Mai asked for help with tears in her eyes and a very pitiful look. He was ready to help her, but first she needed to stop crying and eventually tell her what was wrong. It happened in Han Shi Wei. Head Li, who agreed to pay the costs of scientific research, resigned, and Han Shi Wei immediately abandoned this matter. Yang Feng took the phone and began to call Wu Yang Jing. He will help her in this matter. Having explained the situation to him, they agreed that he would introduce them to the man. He is the chairman of the People's Medical Association. Dr. Mai has a work day today. She needs to take a day off and Yang Feng will introduce her to someone. House of Chairman Huan. He is warned that a person from Ouyang Jing should come to him. At this time, he had a poker game. He was ready to interrupt the game just to see for himself who Ouyang Jin sent. Dr. Mai was worried that such a rich man would not be despised for entering in this way, and she is no less interested in how he met this rich man. Having gone down to the young people, Chairman Huang met Yang Feng. He apologized for such a long wait, but the doctors assured me that everything was fine, and there was no need to worry about it. In general, he is busy all the time, compared with them, the young ones, who idle all day long. But he did not speak about them. His tongue did not mean what he said. The research of Qian requires five, but two million will be quite enough. Chairman Huan has more to give. There is no problem in two million. After all, Master Wu Yang himself introduced it. How glad Dr. Mei was would her research really happen after all. Dr. Yang believed that this case was worth investing more into, and if Chairman Huang is interested in hearing what he thinks about this, he will continue. Such courage and determination was very interesting. Naturally, now he is interested in hearing his opinion. After Qu Yan's research is completed, he will definitely perpetuate his name. In Yang Feng's opinion, a couple of million are not worth his name. It should be a completely different amount. Not too much, but not too little. One billion is a decent amount for this. Mr. Wu's car was racing towards Chairman Huang's house at full speed. 
Having arrived at the door, he very quickly headed towards the entrance. I was worried about what was happening inside. He completely forgot that Chairman Huang is an extremely powerful person. If he pays attention to Brother Yan's clothes, he won't even understand who he's talking to. There was a bodyguard at the door at the entrance, and Mr. Wu asked him if Yang Feng was here and where exactly they were sitting. They were in the living room. He immediately ran before nothing happened. The bodyguard, having heard the name Yang, wondered if this was really the name of this young man. Running into the living room, he immediately asked how the meeting went, whether everything turned out as planned. Yang Feng smiled slyly and said that this is a good acquaintance with a good person. This smile with a smirk alerted Mr. Wu. He tried to calm down Brother Yang. Chairman Huang was angry and did not understand who this guy was, how he dared to ask him how much money one million. It doesn't say idiot to ask for that amount of money. He knows Mr. Ao's reputation and doesn't trust his friends. Before he could utter such words, Chairman Huang received a notable blow to the face. Mr. Wu, Chairman Huang got angry and is completely out of touch with life. If he thinks that his reputation is greater than Mr. Yang's, Chairman Huang was at a loss about Mr. Yang's reputation. He did not understand any of these words. Yang Feng sat like a master, and his gaze was no longer as kind as at the beginning. He needs to think whether he is ready to give one billion. And then Chairman Huang realized... It's Mr. Yang. He didn't recognize him at first, but even so, he really can't give him a billion. Chairman Huang was given three seconds to save his reputation. He has a choice. Either one billion or it will go to feed the fish. The deal was done, a billion of them. Altogether, they left the chairman's house. Yang Feng still has things to do and Wu Yang will be taken back to Qiu Yan Hospital. Dr. Mai was very grateful today for this help. Yang Feng said that if she is so grateful, she can give herself to him or she can marry him. This body is worth more than he gives. Dr. Q Yan was angry for saying this. She quickly got into the car, slammed the door, and drove to the hospital. Patients were waiting there. Yang Feng's business was to go to Feng Dong to discuss the administration of the Jinghai region. Yao family home. Yao is an expert in medicine. Strange screams and requests for murder are heard from the house. A man lay in the middle of the room. He was being gnawed, bitten by strange creatures such as spiders, scorpions, snakes, and much more. Still, the test subject is able to hold out. Half an hour has already passed since he was infected. It's time to give him the antidote that Yao developed yesterday. We need to see if there is any effect on it. As soon as the effect ends, you need to get rid of it immediately and bring a few children who want to live. Previously, she asked to check on Yang Feng. Her people already have news about him. The news is good. She will be happy to hear what they managed to find out. He is now very influential. He recently became the ruler of Jinghai District, Zhonghai City. So far, she has no orders to do anything. When the time comes, this information will need to be passed on to the older brother. He will deal with it himself. So the city is Zhonghai. She just wanted to go there. He will pick up medicinal herbs and at the same time look at him, at the mysterious Yang Feng. Meanwhile, Yang Feng arrived at Mr. Wu's hotel and events are transferred here. It was here that Yang Feng met Mr. Wu for the first time and now he is honored to receive him and his guests at his hotel. And the guests were a black and white demon and their boss. Yang Feng needs to find a separate room with a higher level of security. Mr. Wu is ready to send him the girls right now, but he has a lot of things to do, and now there is no time for that. He wanted to talk to Fang alone. The demon boss did not understand even for a split second what their conversation would be about. Left alone in the room, Fang quickly wanted to know the reason for this solitude. Feng's body is affected by some kind of disease. The only mystery left is how Yang Feng knows about it. When he saw Fang turn around, he caught a slight pause for a moment. Even if this is only a tenth of a second, it is also an indicator of a huge crack. Fang was surprised and wanted to know why he was talking to him about this right now. All because he decided to invite Brother Feng so that they would take over the management of the Jinghai region together. How is it possible? After all, Fang is just a defeated opponent of Brother Yang and nothing more. And besides... Is there any connection between this and his hidden illness? And as it turned out, of course there is. 
Yang Feng invited him to come sit at the table and talk about everything normally and calmly. The two of them sat at the table, one opposite the other. Yang Feng wanted him to give him his hand. He studied medicine, you can trust him, he wants to feel his pulse. Brother Yang Feng is so confident in himself. His medical skill is also at its best, but he is also significantly inferior to his teacher. Brother Ian's teacher is also an amazing person. The channels are in disarray, the vital energy has been damaged. Fang's cultivation methods are the main problem. This was indeed the case. This hidden disease has been tormenting him for a long time. For several years he has been looking everywhere for a doctor, which could help, but to no avail. In Yang Feng's opinion, this disease is not that complicated. He is confident that he can cure her. Fang could not believe the words, but Yang Feng had a condition that he would cure him. He needed to stay and help Yang Feng. Why was this necessary? Because they barely knew each other, just a few moments. He fought with him, and a spiritual connection is worth a thousand words. He trusts him. Yang Feng was so calm, but Feng seemed so hesitant compared to him. In the end, he agreed. His obedience is the best politeness, and from now on, they are brothers. And that's what they will call each other. Fang has to talk about her methods of self-improvement and what is wrong. You can't tell in a nutshell. The man blamed himself on others, and since then, he has lost the trust of the teacher. Then he took a desperate risk, but still that man calculated everything. After escaping from that group, he met the spirits of good and evil, and they became his brothers. Two people who deeply understood him and were determined to help him. Arriving in the Jinghai region, he sought to become an overlord, and for this he needed to raise money. Only then did he first meet Brother Yang. Yang Feng can cure his illness, but he needs medicine. Fang, for his part, was ready to find him and get him by any means. Centennial water grass. It grows in a dark and damp place if he can find it, then Yang Feng will definitely cure him and take his body to the next level. Fang seemed very familiar with this name of the hundred-year-old water grass, and he remembered. He had already seen such a healing plant in the Taishan Mountains. It is very dangerous there. There are poisonous insects and animals everywhere. Yang Feng will go with him. They will move out in two days. Even if there was a mountain of knives and a sea of fire there, he would still go. Since this is for my brother, then so be it. Several days passed and they set off. Tonight we decided to stay and rest in this small village. And tomorrow morning we will climb the mountain and find that healing herb. No matter how much time has passed, Fang still remembers where the flower is located. There is one cold pool there. On the way, the black and white demons discussed Zhong Dei. They didn't feel his warrior's breath, but they didn't feel it from Mr. Yang either. Zhong Dei boasted to him in turn that he was Yang Feng's strongest younger brother. And even for a second, it seemed to him that he felt a little energy. Something was wrong in this village and what still needed to be found out. The streets were empty. No people were visible at all. The situation is not clear, but they will definitely figure it out. Fang wanted to find the owner of the house and ask around. But Yang Feng stopped him and forbade him to touch the door. He said to move away from her, he will now see everything himself. There is no need to be in danger. Using force from a distance, he was able to open the front door of the house. Opening the door on the floor, they saw a dead man with a rash on his body. They were poisoned. Someone did such an inhumane act. These people did not even spare newborns. It seems that this time the trip for drugs is becoming very interesting. In Yao's house, a man on his knees begged to save his child, and the child lay almost lifeless on the floor. Only one thing was interesting, why the man thought that Yao could help him. He has been collecting medicine in the mountains and then selling them for more than 40 years. And from Yao and her team, there is a pleasant smell of good medicinal herbs. These words of his outraged chief Yao, in terms of medicinal herbs, it should smell like poison. She believed that the man was deceiving her and not telling the truth. She was not sure that he smelled the smell of poison. Her snake friend also whispered vile things. The man asked the girl not to be angry and to give him the opportunity to explain himself. They had to quickly go find a cure and leave the man alone. But Yao was in no hurry. The old man's son looked like this because of shock. His soul was stimulated, and his source of shock can be useful to her. She will help the old man save him. How grateful the old man was, he never stopped saying words of gratitude. This is the mirror of Yao's soul. 
It will help the boy temporarily regain his soul and remember what he saw before losing consciousness. If his soul is stimulated again in its present state, he will die. The boy was delirious with the words, Remains, 10,000 snakes, cold whirlpool, healing herb. The father looked with hope at his lying son. His son's spirit had already collapsed. Yao could not save him. When leaving, she told the child's father, if he wants to take revenge, he would come to the Yao family in Tianhu. The guys have already climbed the mountain. But since they got up, Fang doesn't remember the road further very well. Yang Feng had already sensed a strong aura coming from the water nearby. Walking forward, they came across an old man with his dead son. He sat over his child and asked him to open his eyes and look at his father. Seeing this to Yang Feng, it looked like the soul was being heavily attacked. Running up to them, Yang Feng asked the elderly gentleman to get out of the way. His son is now in great danger, but the old man did not want to let them in. He believed that they were demons. He will never trust doctors again. There is no time to listen to these old stories of his. Yang Feng put him to sleep for a short time. While Yang Feng is rescuing the guy, Fang will take the old gentleman aside. This will be a special technique. He took a ball of magical energy and let it into the young guy's body. The guy's soul was destroyed. He didn't know what terrible things he saw. Yang Feng needs to dream something good. If his soul does not hurry back, he will die. Jangu had an idea. If he was allowed to see a beautiful girl, then he would definitely return. Fang was outraged by this proposal. This is nonsense. Ian cannot be like this, and he cannot foresee this. Unexpectedly, this is exactly what worked. The soul returned. The guy was delirious from the girl. Now he is fine, and they can continue to search for healing herbs. They will leave these two here. There is no need to worry about them. They are safe now. They will soon meet people on their way who allowed this state of affairs to happen. The snake guarded the medicinal herb, and there were a bunch of skeletons and bones around it. These were the unfortunate ones who were also interested in grass. Surprisingly, it is in the city of Zhonghai that there is such a treasure that has such power. The purpose of this trip is the healing herb in the middle. The Yao brothers are ready to go down now and bring that medicine for their sister. But there is no need to rush. They are not the only ones who want to get their hands on this medicine. The daughter of the Yao family used magic. She wanted to know who was hiding. I wanted the devil to come to light. Her spell enveloped the space. The place where her competitors were hiding began to tremble, just like everyone else. By force, she was able to move them towards her. The two men did not expect that the eldest daughter of the Yao family would discover them so quickly. She wanted to know the names of these people, who they were and why they were here. These were Feng Lixing and Yun Zhong Yue, masters of the highest rank. Yao Linglong had already heard such names and heard about their affairs. One is a gambler. The second is a libertine. A couple who can only hurt the weak and fear the strong are just some cowards. Today they will not receive the medicinal herb that is now lying under their noses. Their conversation was interrupted by Yang Feng and his team. He intervened and offered to give this grass to him, thereby dividing them. They did not understand who their guest was. It was so busy picking grass today. Yang Feng looked at the girl and realized that it was she who poisoned all the residents of the town under the mountain. As it turned out, if she is not in a good mood, she kills everyone. She is completely heartless, contrary to all expectations to do such a vile thing. Today, Fang will restore justice. Yao Linglong wonders where these two idiots came from. Why, having such a sense of justice, did they not go to the police? Now is a good opportunity to break through to the medicinal flower. Fang will return to settle scores with her. He will be the person who will take away this healing herb. In such a situation, there is no one who could block his path. He began to run with all his might, but something began to catch up with him. Yao Ling Long did not let him in. It turned out that she was much stronger than Fang. The black and white demon were worried about the boss, whether everything was okay with him. He uses such tricks in front of her. Fang is really still too careless, but he can still get to his feet. He's not that weak. So that her blow would work against him, Yao Linglong has mastered almost all poisons, but does not know how to cure them. Fang was losing his powers, and no one could understand what was happening. It was the poison of the Seven Yao, so you can already prepare a coffin for him. No one will help him. Yang Feng ran up to Feng and gave him something to eat. Mrs. Yao believed that if he fed him, he would only die faster. Then events began to happen that no one expected, especially Mrs. Yao. Fang was cured 
but how it happened was a mystery and a shock to her. The poison of the white snake is aconite, castor bean. Such poison is not so special. Mrs. Yao couldn't understand who this guy was and what kind of nonsense he was talking about. The eldest daughter of the Yao family had to hear about him the most. The guy she's interested in is Yang Feng. She remembered that it was he who came to her house and competed in strength. His medical skills weren't bad. Only by taking away this medicine will he not see the skills of healing. Of course, if she gives him the medicine, then next time he will come to her and thank her well. Their wonderful conversation was stopped by another hunters for medicine. They didn't like what these two were deciding between themselves. Forgetting that the two brothers are still here and also claim the healing medicine, were they really planning to fight the Yao family? Presumably it will be a little difficult for the two of them, but they will still try. And they wouldn't mind joining forces with Yang Feng. Nuth did not agree to such a proposal. According to him, they did not have the necessary status to unite with him. With these words, he made these two very angry. They wanted him to repeat what he had said. But as everyone can guess, he didn't care at all. He repeated once again that they do not have enough status to unite with him. Fang became worried. These words would definitely anger the two, and this would increase the difficulty of obtaining the medicine. Even though the eldest daughter of the seven Yao despises them, and not knowing where such a prankster as Yang Feng came from, they are ready to fight. Yang Feng believed that these two needed to stay here and not interfere. But they are not satisfied with this. They believe that the grass is theirs. The eldest daughter of the Yao family watched as they, one after another, tried to take her healing herb for themselves. What fools they are, she won't just let anyone touch her without a fight. She released a cloud of poison, which immediately began to act. Zhang Yue, there is no need to panic. This poison should not be dangerous. That's what his friend thought. But the poison captured him in one moment, and within seconds his body was corroded, leaving bare bones. They are both nobles of the highest level, but very weak for this poison. Fang and Zhang Gu couldn't believe that it was true, that these two were of the highest level. And Yang Feng added that this is the true art of poison Yao Ling Long. She stood watching slyly and said that there is no need to stop. Continue those who wish and collect the medicine. But Feng Lixing decided to escape, threatening Yao Ling Long to return and take revenge for Zhong Yue. Now only Yang Feng and his team remained as her opponent. She gave them three seconds to decide whether he wanted to submit to the Yao family or whether he wanted to die here. Yao Ling Long was able to immediately poison the nobility of the highest level. Does she really have exceptional abilities? As it turned out a few days ago, she was lucky enough to get a promotion. Fang believed that it was all over. There was no point in talking about medicinal herbs. The question was whether they would survive or not. What should they do? The black and white demon believed that they would find a way and escape with Yang Feng. Yang Feng also gave Yao Ling Long three seconds to think. Either she gives him medicinal herbs, or she will become his maid and take care of Uncle Yang. This made her incredibly angry. She said that she would kill him for such words. She gathered all her strength and without hesitation threw a cloud of poison at him. Yang Feng stood and watched as it approached him. It was so powerful that Yang Feng's team couldn't even tolerate it with the remnants of their strength. They thought they all needed to run away quickly. But Yang Feng was not going to stop. He gathered all his strength and blew on this cloud. How Yao Ling Long was strangled when all her poison was gone. She couldn't believe that he would stop her attack with one breath. And step by step, he approached Yao Ling Long, getting closer and closer. She sensed danger. The brothers rushed to protect her. But they are no match for Yang Feng. Their strength is too small. So he quickly dealt with them. And Yao Ling Long was already standing next to her. She was scared. She didn't understand who Yang Feng really was. He said that he is an outstanding talent of the first stage. Only he is at the highest point of the first stage. Who would have thought that such a thing was hidden in their brother Yan? All now medicinal herbs are exactly theirs. Why doesn't Yao Ling Long accept force? Because she had so much determination when she poisoned the residents of the settlement. Yang Feng doesn't need to be so unceremonious. They are both outstanding first stage talents. Yao Ling Long will fight with all his might and it is still unknown who will win. Then she needs to try hard to defeat Yang Feng. Yao Ling Long attacked first, she wanted his death as a gift. Her poison was everywhere. 
It wanted to envelop Yang Feng, but he fought it off with his strength. He protected himself with a dome of his energy, in contact with which Yao Linglong's poison simply dissolved. Yao Linglong could not understand what was happening and how he managed to do everything so well. Everything around them shook from their fight. Zhang Dei thought it was very beautiful, and their brother Yang Feng was so strong. But he needs to kill Yao Linglong quickly. Exhausted and tired, Yao Linglong could not understand whether Yang Feng really wanted to kill her. He wanted her to give at least one reason not to kill her. The reason was that she was the daughter of an ancient family of doctors. Yao Xiaohuan is her brother. Will Yang Feng dare to kill her? Yang Feng was not afraid of her or her family. And the fact that she thought so was her mistake. Suddenly, the head of a luminous snake appeared from the water. The proud head looked at everyone who was on land. It was a mysterious creature. Water hovered around her. Her body was covered with scales, and her eyes glowed with fire. O oh, spirits of the sky, O oh, spirits of the earth, what kind of thing is this? Yang Feng had never seen such huge snakes. Most of all, such a rare curiosity was at least 200 years old. Yao Linglong began to cast a spell. Green rays and clots of energy appeared around her. She said goodbye and began to disappear. They need to hesitate before following the Snake King. Yang Feng tried to stop her to prevent her from leaving. His strength caught up with her halfway. Having pierced her completely, she had to drag her to him. It felt like Yang Feng had killed her. But this is not so. She must have used the Yao family's technique to teleport her. They need to come up with something. She will definitely take revenge on them when she returns. When this happens then and they talk, first they need to do business. The snake immediately began to spray its poison at them. It was poison with high precision, so everyone needs to get out of the way. Yang Feng wanted to try to deal with the damn animal. Gathering his strength, he attacked this snake and entered into battle with it. But events began to develop differently than he expected, which greatly surprised him. He began to try again to deal with this snake. The blows were strong, but not a single bite fell from the snake. He connected the powerful energy of his hands to the blows, directing it towards the snake. The snake was angry. He didn't like what was happening. Yang Feng began to use different striking techniques. Having tried everything, he returned to his original position. After all, his attempts to destroy this animal did not receive a single scratch. Fang is ready to give up all medicinal herbs just to get out of here. But Yang Feng was not satisfied with this arrangement. The material of this animal is rarer than medicinal herbs. The skin of this animal is really hard. It cannot penetrate its defense. Even if he attacks along the entire length, it will not help them. But the eyes, they are without protection. It was decided to do everything so that the snake would look at him and try to attack him in the eyes. Having made a deceptive maneuver, which the snake fell for, the stupid snake did not suspect anything and fell for the trick. Yang Feng was able to hit her right in the eye. Let's see if this option works. And yes, it worked out for them. The snake began to slowly lose its strength until he fell lifelessly to the ground. No one could understand how it happened that the king of snakes became blind in one eye and died. Yang Feng destroyed it from the inside through the eye. But where did the medicinal herb go? As it turned out, she was eaten by this animal immediately after its appearance. Everyone had one question. What to do now? How to cope without grass? But the power of the medicine is still within. His body and besides, snake bile will only cleanse this medicine. And before that, Yang Feng will increase his abilities to the second degree. It would also do well for everyone else to take advantage of the spiritual energy here. Only Zhong Dei did not know what to do at this time, while everyone was replenishing energy. And he came up with the idea to go get some wood so that he could fry the snake later. Fang smelled a delicious smell. What it smelled so invitingly was not clear. Zhong Di turns out to be frying snake meat. This made Yang Feng very angry. I found something to do in such a dangerous place. He didn't feel the danger of Dr. Yang's cord next to him. And he invited him to try the yummy food too. Fang did not disdain. He wanted to be left with the meat that was around the bone. Quickly turn your gaze to the direction where Yang Feng is. It was not a big whirlwind around Yang Feng. This was Yang Feng's cultivation. Absorbs the properties of cold pool water and absorbs it very quickly. The bodies of the others could not withstand such a load. Zhang De fried meat and believed that his brother Yang was so strong, and this heat was so great, it was all due to the absorption of the substance of the cold pool. 
Finally, Yang Feng was promoted. The process of moving to the next level was completed. Everyone began to congratulate him on his promotion to second degree. Yang Feng joked with Zhongda that he fried snake meat, so let him eat more. Perhaps it will help the topic improve potency. But he did not want his reputation to be discredited and blushed. And everyone had already picked up the joke and laughed. His complexion has turned yellow. His face is constantly oily. These are all symptoms of loss of strength, and his nails have practically disappeared on ten fingers. And this is explained by the prolonged use of his hands. And if he continues at the same pace, sooner or later he will turn out to be unsuitable and his illness will break him. Jangu ran away from the insult. It was all over. He was very depressed. Fang was unable to improve, unable to move forward yet. But there is nothing wrong with that. Now Yang Feng will make medicine for him. To do this, they will use the bile of the King of Snakes. And at this time, Zhong Dei walked through the dark forest and thought how he could now meet people. He was very upset, very offended. Yang Feng overdid it with his jokes. Suddenly, someone appeared behind him. This ghost or a person wanted to show him the shortest path to the cold pool. He turned around to see who was standing there and demanding this from him. Meanwhile, the trio took the medicine and a surge of strength came to them. Now the three of them have increased, Fang's illness has disappeared, and this is wonderful. Fang's gratitude to Yang Feng could not be measured. He will never forget his help. Their conversation was interrupted by a man. He was holding Zhanggu by the scruff of the neck. He was also interested in medicinal herbs. Who is this stranger who dared to do this to his friend? This was Zhuan, the true lord of the Xinluo region. Zhang Gu begged to be saved from his hands. Xuan wondered if they took this medicinal herb. Fang looked and wondered if this was really Xuan, the true ruler of the Xinluo region. He knew this man who approached them and who had Zhang Wu hostage. One day when he returned from the mountains, he originally thought of going to the Xinluo area, but due to the presence of Mr. Zhuan and Uncle Xu Ju, he abandoned this idea. Xuan was angry. They acted as if they did not hear what he was asking them. He wanted to know if they took the medicinal herb or if it was someone else's business. The grass was in Yang Feng's hands if he wanted to approach, then the master would need to strike. It's been a long time since anyone dared to talk to Xuan like that. It didn't even amuse him. Even Uncle Shuju was always respectful towards him, but contrary to all expectations, Yang Feng did not look at his position in society. The old man laughed so hard that Yang Feng's ear even hurt. A skirmish cannot be avoided. Yang Feng, as always, however, had his own conditions and proposals. He gave the old man three blows. If after three blows he falls down, then the medicinal herb is his. Mr. Zhuan looked at everything that was happening with condemnation. Even for a second, it seemed to him that the guy was snoring crazy. After all, everyone knows who Master Xuan is, and only a crazy person would want to fight him. First, he will return Zhang to them and throw it into the hands of his friends, and after that, he will come to Yang Feng's terms. Zhang Gu flew towards Yang Feng with great speed and strength. He stopped him with a kick. Next time, he'd better use his hands. That was his friend's request. But they will talk about these nuances a little later. But for now, it's better for Jang to get away from the place of confrontation. The old man believed that his first blow would solve the problem once and for all. There are two more ahead that he doesn't even use in this confrontation. After the blows, one should not say that he is hurting children. But Yang Feng's forces are different, and there was no first blow. The fireball from his hands flew towards Yang Feng. This was the second blow, a blow of mighty fire. A ball of fire was approaching the young guy. Could the old man really be able to win? But Yang Feng stood there without blinking an eye. There was a feeling that he was not at all afraid of what was happening here. The fire covered the guy from all sides. He couldn't even be seen. Just a tuber of fire with a young guy inside. Lord Zhuan thought that he had finished off Yang Feng. After all, no one could fight against this before. The only question he was concerned about now was that he could crush the medicinal herb with his body when he fell to the ground. But in an instant, the fire went out. The clouds of smoke dissipated, and Yang Feng stood alive, healthy and not in the least harmed. This is a turn that the old man could not predict. This was the second blow, and the old man, as it turned out, was not as good as he had proven himself in the city. 
but there is no need to lose your head with joy so quickly because he still has a third attempt, which could change everything because he has a move that few have seen. Now he will show his tenfold strength and began to move closer, preparing to attack. Jangu, Fang stood with their mouths open. Who would win? The black and white demons lost their speech when they saw the red burning eyes of the old man. Mr. Schwan delivered his signature blow and Yang Feng stood still without even moving. What a shock Mr. Schwan had. This man is just a monster. None of his techniques, not fire, nothing takes him away. Three attempts have been exhausted. Now it is Yang Feng's turn. He grabbed Master Xuan by the collar. Now he will demonstrate his blows and techniques. Having received a blow from Yang Feng, the old man apologized. He no longer needed the medicinal herb. It was more important to him that he let him live. He is so young and promising, talented and handsome, simply excellent. He immediately began to flatter him, speaking in beautiful phrases. Yang Feng did not intend to kill him at all. Then what does he need from him? Why does he need him alive? It would be very useful to save his life, Yang Feng thought so. It may be useful to him in the future. Having agreed, they left the old man here, and they themselves calmly left. They have nothing to fear. He will not attack from behind or do anything similar towards them. On the way, Yang Feng gave Jiang some kind of pill to eat. But what was it? the question that did not leave Jiang's head. It turned out that Yang Feng simply used the medicinal herb and made it so that now an ordinary person could eat it too. It will add strength and energy to those who swallow it inside. Having eaten, he began to boast too much. He felt that his body was full of strength. As his energy increased dramatically, he felt invincible. Immediately, he wanted to approach the black and white couple, approach and test their level how strong they are, because at that moment it seemed to him that he would defeat anyone under the influence of this miraculous pill. Jangu experienced all the demons. Did he really believe that he had no equal with this medicine? But as a result, I got a bruise on the half of my face and abrasions. Stop fooling around. They all need to hit the road immediately. The house of Mr. Wu, in which the necessary decision will not be made. While Yang Feng was away, Mr. Wu had a task, and having not completed it, he sought advice from Miss Bai. Mr. Wu didn't understand what to do, Yang Feng returned, and now he needs to report. But the issue with Xu Ju was never resolved, because he really is not a gift. Xu Ju also had a hand in the Jinghai region, this gave him great patronage, and besides, there is also Master Xuan under his command. This person was only waiting for Yang Feng to return to solve the problems. He didn't want to talk to anyone else. During this conversation, Yang Feng entered the room. This means that no one solved the problem, but everyone was waiting for him to come back and solve it for them. This is exactly the conclusion he made after hearing part of the conversation at the door. They did not expect how quickly their boss would return. They hoped that they would have at least a little more time to figure out how to solve everything, but it didn't work out that way. And now he was already at the door. The first thing he did when he came in was ask how things were going with the administration of the Jinghai district, which he allowed Mr. Wu to unite. Where have you gone? What have you been able to do? He immediately fell to his knees. He feels guilty. After all, he failed to cope with the task. He made many attempts, but none was successful. They had some minor difficulties, and they need a little more time. Everything can be solved by trying a bunch of methods, but they are time-consuming. Yang Feng was angry. He could not complete his task properly. Then why does he even keep him here? How can he rely on him? Give him tasks if nothing gets done from it. Mr. Wu was depressed by his words. He wanted to explain everything why it was not possible to carry out his order. The fact that Mr. Zhu Ju does not want to negotiate with anyone other than him. Also, the master who serves him does not allow anyone to get close to his master. Their conversation was interrupted by the bodyguard. He flew into the room with the words that there was trouble, and Mr. Zhu Ju had come to the gate again. He is waiting and wants to see Yang Feng. Yang Feng was surprised that again, but U Yang really couldn't be of any use. A person comes looking for it, but no one does anything about it. He cannot completely blame Ao Yang for this matter. All the masters on our side are unable to defeat the people of Xu Ju. 
Yang Feng told everyone to leave this matter. He himself would meet the dear guest Xu Ju. He himself will look at him, his people, and the master. With a confident gait, leaving the conversation and clarification with Mr. Wu, Yang Feng followed to the door. No one knows how this acquaintance will turn out. Mr. Xu Ju came not alone, but with a bunch of his people. He wanted Wu Yang to leave the Jinghai area, and he was very curious about who the young man next to him was. Yang Feng looked at this entire crowd. Could this really be Xu Ju? He imagined it completely different. Mr. Tu Xu was once angry that some little brat dared to say his name. It's like he doesn't care about life. Mr. Xu was not exactly a baseless person, but he wanted Yang Feng to kneel down and bow to him three times. Yang Feng wanted to call Master Shen right now, let him come out. The old man is in a particularly bad mood today who could dare to call him. Mr. Zhu Zhu was glad that this hour everything would end. Today Yang Feng will stay here with Wu Yang. Master Xuan, seeing who he had to fight against, immediately refused and said that he could not help. A very unexpected situation occurred for Mr. Xu Zhu. He definitely did not expect such a turn. The best master refused to protect him. Yang Feng called out to Master Xuan. Maybe he would like to try approaching him again. Today he did not want to offend the elderly again. Mr. Xu Zhu wanted the old man to quickly deal with this boy, and this boy knelt down and bowed to him. Yang Feng walked up to him, pulled the cigar from his mouth, and pressed it to his forehead with heat. He was very passionate. He asked to stand. Otherwise, he would not get out of here alive. In turn, he did not stop shouting to Master Xuan to stop standing there and start defending himself. Master Xuan asked Yang Feng to release Brother Xu for the sake of his reputation. How funny it sounded. For the sake of his reputation. What kind of reputation can we even talk about after their meeting in the forest in the swamp? With just one movement of his foot, Yang Feng brought Master Xuan to his knees and bowed his head in front of him. This greatly angered Mr. Xu Zhu, and he was left without support in this battle. Master Xuan has no reputation in front of Yang Feng, so he better get out. He started to run away. He was not going to contradict his words. He will leave this place now. The events that were taking place worried Mr. Xu Zhu very much. Such a strong master of his ran away. What happened between them before that Yang Feng did not become the target of the old man? Mr. Wu told Yang Feng that it was Master Xuan who prevented them from returning the territory of the Jinghai region. If he had not resisted, the task would have been completed. Hearing that this young guy's name was Yang, Mr. Xu Zhu realized that this was the same Yang Feng who defeated Fang Dong. Besides this victory, legends were already circulating about him and his strength. Mr. Xu Zhu knows from stories that he is ruthless, but if he dares to act towards him, the Zhou family will not let him go. He is nothing in front of the Zhou family. And this opinion of his was very wrong. Wu Yang explained to him that he was an idiot and also dared to mention the Zhou family in front of Brother Yang. Doesn't he know that the Zhou family just ran away that day? I wonder what the true strength of the Zhou family is then. If everyone who obeyed them and worked for them is already on the side of young Yang Feng. Mr. Zhu Zhu proposed to dare to appoint a battle for him in advance. If he wins, then Zhu Zhu will leave the Xin Luo region and leave the city of Zhonghai. It is not clear whether Mr. Xu Zhu is really capable of being a representative of the Zhou family. He himself understands that he cannot, but Yang Feng threatened the interests of the Zhou family. They will not stand by indifferently. Moreover, Mr. Xu Zhu was sure that a person from the Zhou family would soon arrive here and cause trouble for Yang Feng. That's why he acted like he wasn't afraid of anything. Cause trouble? Very interesting. Then in two days, Yang Feng is waiting to meet this person. Let's see what kind of troubles they promise him and what the outcome of the meeting with this person will be. And now Mr. Zhu Zhu can be free and get out of here. They discussed all the nuances. His future fate would be decided at the meeting. President Mu suddenly stopped Xu Zhu and did not allow him to leave. She still has something to talk to him about. She looked menacing. Something serious had happened. He definitely didn't expect to see someone here but Mu Ziyang. His face changed sharply. His eyes darted in different directions. It looked like he was caught red-handed. Her man just found out that the blood serum from his enterprise was stolen by Zhu Jun. And before leaving, he must give it to President Mu. Mr. Xiu Ju, however, did quite a few good deeds. 
for which he must be punished. This further provoked Yang Feng to deal with him as quickly as possible. This serum was already used by him. That's where old man Xuan got his powers. This is how they managed to keep the area at bay and control the people with the help of Master Xuan. Since he has completely used her, it means she can stop pursuing him for now. But God forbid she finds out that he lied. Then the conversation will take on a different form and he will have more opportunities to butter him up. President Mu drove Mr. Xu Ju away. He has nothing to do here anymore. He soon left the office so as not to be involved in some other matter. After all, his face has already done a lot. Yang Feng asked the president of MU to give him the opportunity to deal with this. He will call and sort everything out. He already has a plan of proposed actions regarding this person. At least he promises that he will help solve the problem with the blood serum. She liked his proposal. She would really like it to be so. But as it turned out, she came here not only for this. Her main purpose in coming is to invite him to serve as her personal bodyguard. His skill and strength and honesty would serve her greatly. These words of hers shocked Yang Feng. He did not expect to hear such a proposal. She recently offered him a position in the company, now a bodyguard position. He didn't want to be tied down. He had a lot of business to solve in the city. But he was not required to protect her all day. He needed to protect her when necessary. Well, if so, then let him find him when you need him. He is ready to be a bodyguard and assistant in necessary and dangerous moments. But naturally, if she agrees to all his conditions, one such call will cost her five. These prices caused him a storm of emotions. But there was no point in bargaining and discussing. He ordered Mr. Ouyang to take them all home. Hunting grounds of the Zhou family, events are transferred here. The senior and junior heads came here for a meeting. The son did not understand why he needed to go with his father here to this particular place. As it turned out, his father had a surprise for him. His uncle is coming back. That's why they're here today. What was the surprise of the younger head of the clan? You can see in his eyes how unexpected this was for him. But also joyfully in an instant. Something strange began to happen. Suddenly a strong wind blew, blowing away everything in its path like a tornado. Behind them, after such a wind, a long-awaited guest appeared. It turned out to be such an enchanting appearance. The first thing he did when he saw them was ask what happened to Joe Kang's leg. After all, his nephew was sitting in a wheelchair and hospital clothes. Immediately, complaints poured out from Joe Kong's mouth that it was a man named Yang Fen who did this to him, and no one could defend him. Not only did he cripple Kang, but he also exposed the Zhou family to ridicule. Therefore, he must destroy it. All the clan's masters are weak compared to him. The uncle said that he would sort it out completely. First, he would return and see the old man. And after that, Yang Feng will answer him for everything he has done. Yang Feng, meanwhile, drove President Mu and her assistant to the corporation, repeating to her once again that if there were any problems, let her call. At the entrance, a worker immediately ran up to her. He said that it was good that she had returned. Yu Xiao couldn't get through to her. He was angry. The smile on her face immediately disappeared. It was clear that the guest was unexpected. Their conversation was interrupted by Yu Xiao. He wanted President Mu to explain where she had been all this time. He was angry and spoke to her in a commanding tone. He called her more than ten times, but she didn't pick up. President Mu asked what brought him here to work with her. He was so worried that he almost called the police, so he decided to come here. Yang Feng did not like him right away. He asked his assistant who this effeminate man was. As it turned out, there is one darling in the province. He comes from a large clan. In turn, Yu Xiao was also very interested in who this guy in green was. He saw Yang Feng as a competitor, so he began to behave even stranger. After all, he did not allow her to hang out in bad company, and looking at those who were next to her, it was clear that she had violated the ban. Yang Feng is her friend. He goes with her on business. With all sorts of words and explanations, the girl tried to explain that there was no need to worry. She was completely safe. Yu Xiao was indignant. He was going about business. While he begged his uncle for a very long time to evaluate her company's medicine, but he constantly refused him. In the end, when he found her, she was already hanging out with another guy. 
The guy is clearly not on friendly terms with his head. President Mu kept trying to prove that she and Yang Feng were just friends. But the jealousy could not be quelled. He interrupted her. He doesn't need to say anything. She must give him a guarantee that later she will be more careful in making friends. And these friendships will not make him nervous. Yang Feng got tired of listening to Yu Xiao's nonsense and decided to say goodbye to Mu Zong. It's time for him to go back, since the pile of unresolved matters will not solve itself. Yu Xiao stopped him, preventing him from leaving. He brazenly said that he did not allow him to leave, and he would leave them only with his permission. Yang Feng did not understand what he needed. But as it turned out, his demand was to warn him not to come here again with Zi Yan. He has no right to come here, much less communicate with her. Yang Feng was wondering why this was forbidden to him. And as it turned out, because Yu Xiao's father is one of the ten richest real estate tycoons, his mother is the chairman of the board of the company. Aunt occupies a high position in the capital of the governor's center. Uncle is the chairman of the Association of Pharmacologists in the province. Yang Feng interrupted his story. He didn't care who he really was. He chooses himself with whom to communicate and to whom when to come. No Yu Xiao can give him orders. The bodyguard rushed to attack Yang Feng because he believed that he had insulted Yu Xiao. No one doubted that with one blow Yang Feng turned off that short-lived bodyguard. But for Yu Xiao, this was news. He did not know what kind of power lay in Yang Feng. Yu Xiao considered him a scoundrel. He beat his subordinates in broad daylight. He knows how to treat people like him. Was he really going to fight with Yang Feng? No, he wants him to spend the rest of his days in prison. President Mu immediately stopped him. No need to call the police. This situation is not worth such publicity because nothing fatal happened. Yu Xiao put forward his conditions. If Yan Wan asks to spare him, then she must fulfill his conditions. First of all, he will call the police now so that they can catch this guy. Secondly, he wants her to leave him. Otherwise, he will not help her in the future and let him forget about fixed prices for medicines. President Mu faces a choice, and this choice is not easy. Whose side will she take? What will she sacrifice? Assistant to President Mu wanted to understand him, after all. They have all been friends for many years. Why these strange conditions? Doesn't their friendship solve such problems?